two boys were walking late at night in the woods, and decided to come to a club that teaches martial arts. At this time, the team practiced led by their coach, and taunted each other non-stop. A guy with red hair walked in there and asked, where are so many people coming from? Did the information leak out? They were the disciples of the Tianxiang Spiritual Palace. One of them was called Lu Zhen and the other was called Zhou Zua. Lu asked what only the people gathered here were counting on. The guy laughed and replied that Lu was a little late. He's been here since just after dark. Lu got angry and said he came last night. And this guy is too ill-informed. Lu got angry at him and told Xiao that the information that the spiritual palace had acquired turned out to be non-exclusive. Zua asked Lu, isn't the owner of this house Su Xiaoshou at stage 3? What is there to live here? What exactly attracted all these people? Xiao said that they don't know anything. He has mediocre credentials, but he entered the sect early and has large savings. And what's more, he's rumored to have a rank 9 spirit sword. And they're all here because of him. Zua told them that a rank 9 spiritual sword like this treasure isn't easy to obtain. But they're going to take it from his corpse. Lu said that the formation would collapse at noon, after which he would rush inside and take the sword. After that, a fierce battle could not be avoided. Lu thought he should go inside and take a comfortable position. Xiao stopped him and asked, isn't he familiar with the order of the Q? Lu replied that according to seniority, he was their elder, so there was no point in them standing in his way. Or do they want to give him a gift themselves? So replied Tsu, at stage 5. And many and many more, and will not give him peace of mind in such a case. Lu said for them to try to do it then. They will now see who is afraid of who. Zua said that he let them not think that he was allowed everything just because he had an elder behind him. Just then, a door opened behind them, and a young guy with a sword stepped out. When Lu saw him, he was surprised and called Su Xiaoshui's name. Su told them that it wasn't dawn yet, so why was it so noisy? Their shouting keeps him awake. The guys were all astonished and looked at him with their mouths open, after all, Su had recently died. Su stood in front of them and hesitated. He said that at least the Su they knew was really dead. In his past life, he suffered from a terminal illness, and came into this world as soon as he closed his eyes and stopped his pulse. And he had to shift into the body of a Tiansan spiritual palace disciple with the most ordinary data. He stayed in the spiritual palace for many years, and only reached the third stage of tempering the spirit and ten. He went to the breakthrough retreat with a determination to die. But it didn't work out and he died. They both end up with miserable lives. And if he's given the opportunity, he shouldn't be tormented by rumors. Except his powers aren't even up to par, so how can he beat the others? I wish he had some kind of cheat. And then in a moment a lottery appeared in front of him in which he won the active skill normal, and the passive skill red. Sue started playing with it and said it was so crudely executed. Is this system mocking him or something? Sue thought, active and passive skills. In terms of games, active skills are much cooler than passive skills. How could he fight enemies while relying on passive skills? But this system heavily favors active skills. This roulette is so collaborative. Sue began to play with it and twist it around asking how does this thing work? Does the arrow move? It's hard for him, he doesn't even have any lubricating oil. Sue couldn't move it and asked, what the hell is this useless shit? Is the system messing with him or something? Sue thought with his head, since his arrow wouldn't turn, he should turn the disc. And then it started to turn and Sue won the jackpot. He said, an active skill popping up in front of him. When he turned the disc the system said congratulations. And he got a passive system. Sue thought it was cheating and decided he needed to spin again. And then the system said again that he had a passive system. Sue seeing the bright light on him yelled for her to stop. He immediately moved into his life. Su grabbed his head and shouted that he hadn't lucked out and pulled out a passive skill, but what was with the breathing methodology? Couldn't he have been given something more useful? How angry he is at this system. He started to calm himself down with his breathing, but then realized that he couldn't breathe because of it. 
opening his nostrils the widest he finally inhaled air. When he opened his eyes after the last minutes of his life he saw that he was up for air and thought he had made it through. When he came to his senses he got excited and said it was awesome. Is passive breathing some kind of cultivation technique? He was very happy with himself, after all, this kind of chance of falling out is 10%. And he Sue was invincible even if he stood still. One of the flies swooped down on him and Sue immediately killed it and said it was worth bragging about as his defenses were pierced. And then the system in front of him popped up and showed him that Sue had been attacked and passivity points had been added. But the breathing technique has also increased to level 1, and so have the passivity points. Sue saw that it could also be pumped up. Since it was an acquired skill there must be innate skills as well. The mosquito bite didn't give many points, so it would be hard to get them. And then he had to go outside because of the screaming. Out on the street, the guys were telling him he wasn't dead. Is it really him? Not some fake? The system immediately saw this and rewarded him with plus 12 passivity points. Sue realized that there was no point in thinking, this was just the beginning. And it seems that in that life, the god had decided to take care of him. I wonder what kind of life he will live this time, Sue thought. Sue knew that stage 3 and 4 were the highest stage 5 and it was in Lu's possession. They gathered to fight over the ninth grade spiritual sword. Sue said that they had come for his dead body, but unfortunately for them, he had broken through and they had come all the way here for nothing. Stage 4 and he shouldn't be touched. Lu replied that a stage 4, so also a rank 9 spiritual sword, he was no opponent to him, what to speak of the others. Sue told them to go back to where they came from. And let them tell their elders that if they want his sword, let them come for it themselves. After all, what good would it do to call the younger ones here and cause trouble? Lu replied that brother Sue had great strength, so he should go. Zuo was surprised and asked Lu, is he just going to leave like that? Lu asked, why not? Let him go and kill him if he wants to. Just let him remember to get rid of the body, Zuo replied that he couldn't. Su told them to stop. He asked that they thought they could come and go here whenever they wanted, do they all realize how much they pissed him off? Chao asked, didn't he say he was letting them go? Lu asked Su, does he take back what he said? If he has the desire to fight, he won't be able to handle everyone. They will take turns fighting. Sue replied not to be nervous, he just had something to say. And he decided to take the rare opportunity to earn passivity points. Sue said that they only knew that he had broken through to stage 4, but had actually broken through to stage 5. Hearing these words, all the guys were surprised and could not believe it. And the points of suspicion and passivity increased by 17. Sue realized that of course. Whether it was physical or moral pressure, the passivity points would continue to rise. Sue said that not only was it stage 5, he was already almost at stage 6. The system immediately said that the passive points were added by 15. He started to go on and on and said that compared to them, he was even at stage 7. Yes and stage 8 is nothing more than a splash for him. Lu asked Sue, is he having fun making his brothers laugh? Stage 8? If he's at stage 8, he'll run his head against the wall. He'd rather die than be bullied. If it's at stage 8, then let it come here. And decided to capture him altogether. Sue ran and shouted at them that they shouldn't throw words around like that. Lu said if he had the courage to tease them, then let him dare to open the door too. Sue sighed and said it was dangerous. I should have pissed them off. The system added one point to his score again. Sue immediately realized that someone outside was interested in him. At this time, the girl was sitting on the gate and said that brother Xiaoxiao was so cute. In his past life he was physically tormented and his new image is mentally tormented. They are comrades in misfortune. But he's not going to put up with this kind of torture anymore. Now that he has a second chance, he will never harm this body. Hearing this the system said that a new feature had been unlocked, the mall, and he needed to open the interface to view it. Sue was surprised and didn't realize what had happened. He opened and saw a gift box with a passivum. And then Sue realized that in the mall, passivity points could be used to buy things. He immediately said what he was buying. After all, the system kept counting passivity points, 
and he kept thinking what value they had. After making the purchase, the system informed him that ten skill points had been obtained, and three passive keys. Isu saw this and said that the items had been updated. The system showed him what the price of these items were. When Su saw this, he said that he had spent 10 passive points to buy something more expensive than 10,000 points. Su got excited and said that he would consider it a gift set for a new bee. And began to thank the system. The system appeared behind him again and said that to unlock the new roulette, let him use the passive key. And please don't be disobedient. When Su heard that, he immediately gasped and felt sad. After all, he had been unlucky at roulette last time. Sue opened it and said he couldn't even see the prizes on it, a real surprise box. At least he was prompted to use the passive key. Sue reached for the keys and said he would take the chance. Need a skill that could make him stronger in an instant. Sue prayed that it wasn't an active skill. It would be useless to him, he needed a passive now. The system told him that she thanked him for visiting. Sue lost his temper and asked her, could she be more serious? What more thanks for visiting? Sue calmed down and said that he was not African, next time it should work out. And then the system tore up his cards again and told him that she thanked him for visiting. Sue couldn't take it anymore and started spitting blood. Sue said that everything was already spent. And another thank you to him came his way in this roulette. The system came out and said that a lasting passive skill called amplification had been obtained. Sue said that this was the ultimate miracle. Sue looked at his muscles and asked, what kind of strengthening? A technique to strengthen the body? But he didn't feel any stronger. But judging by the system's naming habits, this skill is of the invincible type I guess. Sue stood in front of the system and said that maybe it's all because of the low level. Anyway, he has 10 skill points, pump some in and see the effect. Sue did as he said, and his level started to rise from the second level and reached the fifth level. Sue felt that he now had an effect. So he decided to pump in some more. Sue didn't stop there, and with a swing, he reached level 8. He took the shirt off of himself and decided to take a look. He said he wondered how much stronger he was after pumping the boost up to level 8. Sue slammed his powerful fist on the ground and the concrete was shattered. Sue was excited about his new strength. He said that this strength corresponded to the eighth stage of spirit hardening. He has three more skill points. He decided not to stop there and pump up some more. And he made it to level 10. In a moment, he stopped when he saw the enhancement innate at level 1. He didn't understand how this even happened. Sue immediately grabbed his body and didn't understand what was happening to him, for he was burning like a furnace. Sue opened his arms in a moment and began to glow like Bengal lights. His new beauty was as graceful as a model. Sue felt such a sensation as if he had been reborn. This was how an innate skill felt. Sue decided that he wanted to try out his strength. And with strong pounding hands he aimed at the ground. From being hit so hard, he didn't expect there to be much of an effect. The result was an explosion. Sue rejoiced and said that it had a very destructive power of someone with a strength of five units. If such a blow were to hit someone on the head. And now it looks like he has a good chance at the cloud chasing tournament. This tournament is very big. An annual examination of the sect in which fellow disciples compete in techniques. On the basis of their achievements envy their promotion or exclusion. The original owner was expelled for two years, and if he repeats the same mistakes, he could be expelled from the sect. It was because of this that he was desperate when he went to meditate, putting his life on the line. In three days, there will be a tournament of chasing clouds in the outer courtyard. He will show them the rebirth of the phoenix. Sue said that this time, he would amaze everyone. And show what true warrior strength is all about. At the Tian San spiritual palace in the outer courtyard, the guys all gathered and greeted Big Brother Sue. Zwa said upon seeing Sue, it was like he was a completely different person. He managed to break through, so his aura became different. Sue made his way over to everyone and saw that such a crowd had lined up to participate this year, but you could only register by walking up to that person. Sue walked over to it and saw that it was the only empty window but there was no one here. He started knocking and shouting to Elder Chiao to wake up. Chiao opened his eyes and looked up smiling, isn't this Su thought he. 
but how come he wasn't dead yet? Su immediately saw that this rude old geezer had insulted him. No wonder no one came up here to register. Xiao asked the guy, did he come to opt out and go down the mountain? Su asked, what do you mean refuse? Isn't he one of the top ten chasing clouds? Xiao smirked and asked, he's saying what? And then the system added his sarcasm points of passivity. Su told Elder Xiao that he was serious. His strength has greatly increased after the killing meditation. His body is at the innate realm. Xiao couldn't help but spit out his water with laughter. People passing by didn't understand what was going on there. Xiao said, giving Su a look at his serious face. Like he's telling the truth? He can't take it anymore, that's hilarious. The system immediately added one point to his praise. Soi covered his face because he was ashamed. And realized that the system was a toxic system. The guys said that Su was criticized, he also pissed off Elder Chiao. And they heard that he broke through to stage 8. And then the blonde guy in the crowd said that he had just said he had achieved innateness, hadn't he? The guys said they didn't believe him. The system graded out that Su's doubt points had increased. He turned around and saw that it was coming from the boys. Su realized that Elder Chiao's wave of laughter had raised many questions for him and brought a bunch of points. Chiao said to Su stop laughing, what did he come for? Su replied he almost forgot. He wants to register for the Chasing Clouds tournament. Chiao asked, not afraid of embarrassing himself. Registering it innately or the four stages of spirit hardening, Su replied that there were four stages. Chiao said for him to be content with life and not be vain. Su realized that although his cultivation was at the fourth spirit tempering stage, but his body was definitely innate. Su told Elder Chiao not to forget about the spirit crystals. Chiao threw them to him and said he was a resourceful guy. And so he got twelve spiritual crystals. Chiao said that he personally bought the elixir for him, just don't let him tell others. Su saw that Elder Chiao cared for him so much. If it wasn't for his support for the past two years, he would have been kicked out long ago. He would repay him for such kindness as the opportunity presented itself. Chiao thanked and said he was on his way. Chiao thought that even if the guy broke through to stage 4, he was still out of luck. He would probably never see him again. Chiao said that Su must not find out that he had sold the information about his death meditation. Let him take the elixir as compensation. But then the system added points to his score and Su thought that he could still understand the anxiety, but deception? What a sly old man. Lying on the couch, Su saw that he had a total of 148 passive points. But that's not enough, you can't even buy anything with it. And it seems that to get passivity points, he'll have to sneak into the crowd and make a mess of things. Wouldn't that make him famous as some kind of buffoon? Su realized that he would have to take on the role of the villain. He's making too much up, he has to somehow increase his strength in three days. Su said that Elder Chiao was unexpectedly generous. The spirit tempering pills are very expensive, each one is much stronger than twelve spirit crystals. And now he should try the spirit crystals. But how to use them without side effects? Su leaned his nose against it and couldn't help himself, he began to dream of girls caressing him. It was as if his soul was being tenderly stroked by the celestial women, and every pore in his body was exploding. And the lightness rises from the soles of his feet to the top of his head. Su said that cultivation was a good thing, but the most important thing was that cultivation was very effective. He had just broken through from stage 4 in one breath. The breathing technique that the system gave him is a very frightening thing. It absorbs perfectly without any loss. And ordinary spirit crystals are also known for their convenience, but aren't spirit hardening pills more effective? Su was very lethargic and flushed. But was saying that he could still practice and reached for the potion. Three days later, on top of the towering clouds, the Grand Elder of the Spiritual Technique Pavilion, Xiao Qixiu was there and was being considered. Xiao told the guys that the total number of applicants for this tournament was 1,782. The first tournament is a group qualifier, with 100 people in each group, there will be 18 groups in total. There may be a referee in each group, but if he assists them there will be a disqualification. His advice to them would be fatal wounds and injuries are inevitable, let them not overdo it. The judge is not a god, 
and there may be times when one of them gets angry, distracted, or frozen with fear. At those times, no one will rescue them. The guys said that he could die. Xiao replied that it was true, life was full of surprises and they wouldn't always come out of battle in perfect condition. Elder Chiao said that their jokes were still just as effective. Scared everyone into cold sweat on such a hot day. Xiao said that at noon, he announces, the official start of the Chasing Clouds tournament. The guy was yelling that whoever could make it to the end would be the winner. And there are prizes for the top 10 and they can move on to the next stage. They have to try really hard. The guy told the others to get up on stage when their number was called. The guy called the two guys over and told Lu and Zhuo to come on stage. Zhuo immediately said that they were in the same group. But he didn't want them to be. Zhuo realized that they would have to fight on the same stage. Lu heard that they were also in the same band as Su. The guys asked, didn't Su come out of meditation? Where the hell is he? Chao asked, he couldn't have overslept could he? The boy replied that it couldn't be. He'd seen him on his way here recently, except he looked strange. Maybe he was mistaken. The guy got tired of waiting for him and asked loudly, is Su here? Xiao said, if he didn't show up by the end of time, let him move on to the next one. Elder Jia had said about Su that he was a reckless madman, how dare he be late for the Chasing Clouds tournament. Zhao Yinin asked Sister Su, the brother Su she told her about seems to be in no hurry to come out. Did she forget to wake him up? Second court disciple Su Qian Qian asked Sister Zhao, what is she talking about in general? Brother Su will definitely come. He must have been delayed by something. It's his last tournament, she should watch it. When she first entered the outer courtyard she didn't know anyone there, it was because of his help that she was able to make her way to the inner courtyard in a month. Zhao said getting into the inner courtyard in a month, her talent is comparable to Sister Xian Sha. So many days had passed, and she still remembered the favor they'd done her. Sis will help her find someone better. The guy got tired of waiting for him and said his number again and gave the name Su Shaoshui. He's getting one last chance to get out. The night before the Chasing Clouds tournament, Su realized that he had a tournament tomorrow. Success or failure depended on it. As if not to go crazy, he got high on this potion and powder, didn't go sailing off to a distant voyage. In the shadow of the tournament, he was heading for the mountains and said with fatigue that this damn breathing technique had worn him out. On the way, an old man caught up with him and asked Su that he was from the outer courtyard. Su bent over with fatigue and replied that he was right. The old man asked if he was going to participate in the tournament. Su replied that not really, he was just on his way. The old man said that young people should not burn out. Health is the capital of the revolution. Su realized that the spirit hardening pills and breathing methodology harmonized perfectly with each other without any such effects. He had already reached the peak of stage 5, but because the pace was too fast, his body could no longer cope. Su apologized to the old man and said he was in a hurry and said goodbye. The old man said unsteady gait, but not floating, and the steps are soundless. His face is emaciated, but his eyes are piercing and full of life, and his breathing is even. And such a talent languishes in the outer court, he clearly lacks luck. And then Su finally got there and said he was here. Su was happy to see him and said he had come. Zhao asked, is it him? Zhao asked what Su had done to him. Su was surprised at first not understanding and asked, what did she do? Zhao replied to Su look at him, holding on to his waist with trembling hands, cheeks sunken and eyes closed. Wasn't she the one who secretly visited him three days ago? Did she do this to him? Su blushed and told sister Zhao to stop bullying her. Su apologized and said he was delayed. Jia said, that kid he made people worry, what was he doing? The guy shouted to everyone that the Chasing Clouds tournament had officially begun. Lu immediately punched one of the guys, causing him to fly back into Su's arms. That wasn't all, the guys started chopping everyone in order, and those flew off like a cork to Su's hands. Su wondered how they could kill each other so calmly. They're all alive. And then he couldn't help himself and told them all to stop. He didn't understand what was going on, for they were supposed to be his passivity points. 
how could this be possible? Su told them that oppressing the weak wouldn't show their abilities, so let them attack him while they had the chance. The guys laughed at him, they saw how he couldn't stand on his feet and they were shaking a lot. The guys asked, one against a hundred? Did he see himself when he took a piss this morning? Fighting a weakling like that? Doesn't he think he's a little too big for his own good? And then Su got excited, because his plan worked, they all bought it. He decided to add treats to make them want to attack him. Su said that this is the ninth grade spiritual sword. Whoever defeats him, he'll give it to him. The boy tried to stop him, for he would disrupt the arena in such a way. Su replied that the judge would be a witness, if he didn't keep his word, let him be struck by lightning. Su shouted to everyone that here was his ninth grade spiritual sword. Immediately, all the guys attacked him, threatening to kill him. Zhao told Su that her brother Su has a spirit of self-sacrifice, discarded it and involved others in the competition. Xiao also realized that Su had used the sword to ignite people's hearts, intending to deal with everyone involved at once. I would love to see what unique stunt he decides to pull. And then two guys attacked him, and one of them used a wind-dissecting linux. And the other one used a spirit-extinguishing sword. Su asked, Sword Blade? You shouldn't use cold weapons in battle. Immediately, he flipped them both over with a single blow. The referee said both guys are out of the arena, which means they lost and can no longer participate. The guy said Su was at stage 6. But he's actually at 7. With one slap, he could take him down. At this time, Su realized that they were trapped in his trap. The guy said that Su turned into a pig to eat a tiger. Zhao said that his body is very strong, something like this is only possible at stage 5. Su replied, that's exactly what it is. Brother Su is very strong. He will definitely take the first place. Zhao said that Su had said that this was his last tournament. Zhao saw this battle and realized that this guy had innate breath. Su said that in truth, he had recently practiced an invincible technique, so his body was unmatched. Today he wants to test everything he has learned. If they come at him with their bare hands, he will not move or even resist. Jia shouted at Su that he was crazy. But then a fierce guy came out and said that it seems Su is confident in his skills. His name is Chiu Wei, he possesses the hundred-step fist king of beasts. And asks for guidance. Su listened to him and told him to get to it. Chiu replied that he would apply his technique. Chiu showed himself in all his glory, and attacking used the hundred steps of a fist beast. Su said a hundred punches in one breath, cool. At this time, Chiu was trying various ways to do something, while Su was just defending himself and smiling. Chiu didn't understand how it was so, why he couldn't do it. After all, he had already used this technique three times. But he didn't fall down, he didn't even take a step. Su asked Chiu, has he not eaten mush in a long time? And showing his middle finger, he started making fun of him. Chiu didn't like this, and decided to unleash all his power on him, and asked for strength from the beasts around him. The guys asked, is this really a blood-burning technique? Mad Chiu has gone completely insane. This technique burns blood and temporarily increases strength. But speaking of stage 5, even practicing it at stage 9 will tear you apart. Chiu didn't wait for the right moment and headed to attack Su, after all, he needed that sword. Zhao said it's the end. She's afraid this punch will make his brother look like an idiot. Or maybe even kill him. The dust immediately rose in the arena, making it impossible to see anything. The guys were asking who won. The guys saw Chiu and said that it seemed like he would have the last laugh. Still, the difference in strength was obvious. The judge didn't even move, Su must have already died. Damn it, he had obtained a ninth grade spiritual sword. Su said that he wouldn't tolerate something like this. Su punched him and calmed him down saying that Chiu was tired and now he would have to rest for a long time. When they saw that Su was alive, they couldn't believe it. After all, he should not have survived such a blow. Elder Jia was also worried and was very happy for his tomboy. Su asked who was willing to be next. The system immediately jumped in and awarded passivity points to Su. He rejoiced and said, here come the points. 
and Xiao should be thanked. Zhuo told Bart Jun that for some reason he felt that Su was about to be exhausted, didn't he want to test his dark menace fist? Jun replied that not yet. Right now, he's not his opponent. They need to watch for a while longer. Jun saw that after coming out of meditation, Su began to behave differently. And that was keeping him from calming down. The guys were now saying that Su was definitely at stage 5. His body is stronger than a stage 9 practitioner. What kind of spiritual technique does he use that he can resist blows like that? Su replied that it wasn't a spiritual technique, but an innate level enhancement. The guys said that it was nonsense and they didn't believe it. The guy said they were all stupid cowards. He might have some abilities, but after a few fierce skirmishes, he lost half his life. He's just showing off now so no one else dares to attack him. Muscular idiot Chiu had given him enough time to ferret out the situation and saved him a lot of trouble. He saw that this loon Su had carefully planned everything, he was confident of his victory. And then a guy introduced himself, his name was Yi Chun Ting, and said that he owned an offering bow, and asked for advice. Su thought, this offering fist seems to be one of the accumulated techniques. This technique aims to kill with a single blow, no efficiency at all. Su replied that he wouldn't answer him, could he replace the reception? Yi laughed and saw that he was shitting himself with fear. Yi immediately raised his hand and started attacking, and told Su to get a strong punch from him. Su felt that fist coming towards his face in that fist, and immediately dodged it at the last moment. Yi fell to the ground and said he shouldn't have done that. The referee said the guy was out of the arena, eliminated. Yi yelled that Su had set him up. Su apologized to him and said that he was more interested in receiving a hundred punches in one breath. Su turned to the guys and said that they had seen for themselves that it was hard to attack one by one, and it was no use. Time is limited, so let them attack all at once. A guy in the crowd came out and said loudly that he wasn't going to put up with this mean-spirited backstabber any longer. Since it can't be shaken by fighting one at a time, they will act together and throw him out of the arena. The guys immediately all gathered in a circle and one of them told everyone to attack. When Su saw this, he was even a little happy. Su was taking everything in and saw his passivity points grow. But he doesn't feel anything from them. Elder Xiao said he was curious. The guy asked Xiao, he was so curious. He hadn't seen anything so outrageous in 30 years of practicing. Xiao saw that this boy is an entertaining, astonishing talent. He has three innate talents, and an innate body. A great rarity, Su asked them if they were ashamed to attack with such a crowd. He's so pitiful, he keeps getting beaten up but he won't give up. He's so tough, so strong and unyielding, he's the most attractive man she's ever known. And then all the girls gathered in a circle and shouted for Su to only go forward. He can do anything. Su saw the system open up and the excitement of passivity increase. He didn't realize at first, what was happening. Xiao said, it's getting noisy. And the result is already obvious, now they can finish early. The guy replied that he had heard and said there was one stick of incense left before the end of the group stage. Su wondered why they had a time limit. There were still a lot of people left in the arena, and he had been beaten more than the others, so he shouldn't be counted as a defeat. Su decided it was time for him to end the show too. He immediately grabbed one by the arms and said that if there were no fish left on the surface, it was worth sinking deeper. Su proceeded to throw himself out of the arena, and handled it very well. People didn't believe this could happen. After all, everyone is outside the arena. Xiao saw all this and counted too much and decided he had to get out. Su grabbed him and asked, was he going somewhere? Xiao asked what he wanted. Su replied that he thought he was pretty strong. The incense stick hasn't finished burning yet, how about another round? The moment he became strong and fierce, exuding heat. It was refreshing, Su asked the guy, how about another round? Chiu couldn't accept it and ran away like a rat. The referee said Chiu is outside the arena, so he is out. The guy looked at the candle and said that the competition was over. Zua told brother Lu that he was right. It was worth the wait, and they would be able to get into the top ten. Lu replied that he was wrong, they were in the top three. 
the guys couldn't believe that Sue had beaten everyone. All the girls were screaming that they wanted Sue. They were ready to give birth to a monkey with him. Sue laughed and asked why give birth to a monkey. Lou told Sue's brother that they congratulate him on his victory. Sue replied that he congratulated them too. The guy walks up to Sue and says that he congratulates him and this is the prize he gets for first place. This is the champion's spatial ring. It's a rare treasure worth a thousand gold pieces. Sue said that it was much more valuable than his ninth grade spiritual sword. And then he asked, where was his sword? The boy replied that it was safe. He would be able to pull it out once he used a drop of blood to make the ring recognize him as the master. Zhao reached out and said, might as well go and meet her little brother. Su said he shouldn't. It's already good that he won't leave the spiritual palace. Zhao said to Su just to look at that joyful face. Isn't she afraid of his brother being stolen? Su asked, what kind of nonsense is this? She hadn't even thought of such a thing. Zhao asked surprised, really? Then Sis will ask him to be her Daoist partner. She won't mind, right? Su ran away and said that Sister Zhao was stupid. Zhao laughed and said she was very nice. Su saw that one of the girls ran and it was Su. He looked at Zhao and saw the seductive glasses going up. Su saw that it was a bitch of a system. Why this exposure? She's misleading people. Su yelled to his beautiful little sister to stop. Zhao responded by telling him to try and catch up with her. Elder Xiao came over and said that Su was good. He turned the situation around during the beating, what a guy. Xiao asked Su, did he not even notice him? All this time he was staring at the girls again? Su replied that no such thing was in his mind. Did he see his performance from start to finish? Xiao replied that he had been present at the duel the entire time. When did he only have time to practice his innate body? Had he even hidden it from him? Su replied that he had previously told him last time. He didn't believe him himself. Xiao said that at that time, even the devil didn't believe him. And started laughing loudly. Su waved his hand and started to leave. Xiao stopped him and held out the bottle saying that he was injured. Let him go back and heal his wounds properly. Su seeing the bottle started to glow with joy and said that it was an elixir. He asked Xiao to give it to him. After coming home Su lay down on the couch and said that he had become the champion of the group stage, this was his great achievement in the past three years. And the innate level of enhancement is really something. I'd have to drop some blood to make the champion's ring recognize its master. Su realized that the space inside was half the size of the house. There weren't many things in it, the most valuable being a hundred spirit crystals and a bottle of elixir. He understood the hardening elixir. We must get him out of here soon. This is his first victory on the road to a life of suffering. And he must keep the ring as a memento. And now it was time for the most important part, how many passivity points did he manage to pick up during this brutal and crazy battle? Su immediately opened the system and saw that he had 176 passive points collected. He was disappointed because there were only 5 digits. Su said as much as 17,000. He got very excited and said that it was very good for him. After all, not taking into account the guys who didn't participate in beating him up and only gave a few passivity points, he had cut down a whole 17,000 points. Su calmed himself and told himself to be quiet. After all, it was still unknown what he could spend this kind of points on. He opened his suitcase and saw that he had something new. But when did it arrive? Su saw that he had gotten 5,000. And advanced to the second stage. After the passive skill reached the innate level, the normal points expired. The system wants him to use second level skill points to level up? Second level skill points are needed for reinforcement. But why is it marked in grey thought Sue? Can't they be bought? He has enough passive skill points. Maybe he can only buy second stage skill points when he reaches the realm? Sue said that in any case, he wasn't going to rely on reinforcement alone. He needs something from the other direction as well. With 17,000 passive points, it was time for him to experience the joy of doing 10 spins in a row. After doing so, he was very disappointed, because they had decreased by 10,000. He put his hand on the twist and used the epitome of luck. 
The system just thanked him for attending and gave him nothing. Su fell to the floor in humiliation and was sad about his lost points. So Su decided to use it once more and took one skill. Su saw that the skill spearhead had fallen out. He did not understand what it was because there was some uncomplicated name. Su said that since it's a lasting passive skill, so his role is making a part of his body sharp, not the hidden bitterness. Maybe he makes his fingernails sharp. Su decided to try it out and smashed his fingernails against the table. But it went wrong and he was in a lot of pain. Su said it wasn't a spearhead. It's the effect of the innate body enhancement. Maybe the purpose of passive skills overlap, he thought. After looking at the system he realized that it wasn't. The system can't be that stupid. Absolutely impossible. The system congratulated him on his points again. Su said the acquired one was too low. Same with the reinforcement last time. Su said that perhaps the effect of the spearhead would become more noticeable if one pumped it properly. He was thinking, should he continue pulling cards or pump the skill? Su pulled out the key and was glad he had the last one left. And decided to hold on to it until next time. Su looked at the system and saw that there was something wrong. He asked, what's going on? A black screen? Legend has it that there is a sword technique that crosses the firmament. When this technique was created, the strongest immortal swordsman was Elder Cha, the last owner of the Holy Spirit Temple and its leader, Qi Jianxiao, hiding from the world. So the story goes, the future generation adopted the seven sky-crossing swords and created the white cloud sword technique. And of course, its quality had decreased by several levels. The White Cloud Sword technique is recorded in the hidden spiritual pavilion of Tian San Spiritual Palace, where a total of 13 swords are displayed. Su, who had previously qualified, lost everything he had been learning his entire life. In the end, after three months, he had learned the first sword calm White Cloud. As his mind was consumed by darkness and he felt the shaking of heaven and earth, Su saw the hidden bitterness flying away with him towards the clouds. The first sword has no beginning or end, it is immortal. Endless sword-wielding styles rushed into his mind, and countless insights came one after another. Fully aware of the jab, the horizontal, the provocation and the cut. And now Su's body began to burn he asked with fright, what is happening? Su said that the passive skill of mastering swordsmanship had been obtained. Had he really become the epitome of luck? He wondered how much swordsmanship had increased with the use of the reinforcement and point. Su pondered for a long time whether he should try it. Going into his subconscious mind, he realized that he needed to bear his sword. Su swung his sword around and opening his eyes saw all of his chairs being destroyed in a single strike. Su was very surprised from acquiring such a skill for himself. He didn't believe it and didn't understand how it was possible. At the meeting, the man was saying at the table that he didn't drink alcohol. A true cultivator should not be intoxicated by alcohol, but by the sword. In turn, alcohol clouds the mind, and if you continue to drink, the sword loses its precision. The elder hearing these words didn't hold back the alcohol in his mouth, and at the fountain spit it out into the guy's face. He laughed and said he didn't do it on purpose. He asked the man that he had achieved great heights in kendo without drinking. The man replied that he had indeed made some progress. The elder asked Elder San had returned, but for how long? Elder San drank his alcohol and replied that he would be delayed for a while. He could be either just drunk or intoxicated by the sword. Of course it was a pity that he couldn't do it, otherwise the eighth immortal sword would have been his. The elders started laughing at the man. In the Tian San Heavenly Palace, in the outer courtyard, a warrior came out and felt his sword feeling anxious. Elder San said that swords are shouted. And the acquired sword intent can be heard too. The man said, just like that, suddenly in the outer courtyard of a disciple capable of developing acquired sword intent. In addition, two more have innate spirit hardening, and one has an innate body. The quality of the disciples in the outer palace is unusually good. Elder San asked, innate body? He said that as far as he could remember, the last time the sword intent was manifested by a Sioux girl. The man replied that yes, that was the innate intention of the sword. Sioux is incomparable. She is a true genius. 
If one of the continent's twenty-one famous swords were to fall into her hands, even it would not be her equal. The elder said to keep it to himself, they should go look. He has no intention of staying here any longer. Elder San said they could tread. Immediately they obeyed him and flew away. San seeing that he was left alone slowly, sighed, and took the mug of alcohol in his hands and drank. At this time, Su rejoiced and said that this was the first style of white cloud swordsmanship, and he perfected it. It became much more powerful than the original. This mastery of swordsmanship is simply terrifying. Su put on his new clothes and was happy about his breakthrough. The peak of stage 6, he was only one step away from stage 7. He must have managed to break through during enlightenment. Immediately, the elders came to him. Su was surprised to see Elder Xiao and Xiao. He wondered what they were doing here. Su thought, the sword stopped moving, didn't it? There are sound-suppressing formations in the courtyard, from what verse? Xiao turned to Su and asked, is this his yard? Isn't this the masochist with the innate body from the group stage, he thought? Su bowed and replied that he was greeting the two elders. And said that this was his court. Xiao pointed his finger and asked what happened to him. Su replied that he was practicing fencing, and carelessly got what they were seeing. And then the system popped up and said there was a suspicion of passivity. Su knew it. They're just underestimating him, aren't they? Then why don't they just say so? Xiao thought that this guy had an innate body and acquired sword intent. How could a guy at the sixth stage of spirit hardening have all this? He has a gift, he shouldn't have languished in the outer court for the last three years, he should have been let in the inner court a long time ago. Xiao slapped him and asked, does he think he's tough? Does he lie and not blush in front of his elders? Xiao said that last time he didn't believe in his innate body, admits, and now he says that he comprehended the sword intent? Su said that this was his home, after all. Who else could have done such a thing if not him? Xiao said that he knew he had developed a rebellious character after coming out of reclusiveness. It's okay to be young and frivolous, but everything must have a limit, does Su understand that? One could imagine that all the people he had wronged throughout his life came to take revenge, but the Wang family let him go with the horse, only after destroying his crowbar and not harming his life, wasn't that how it was? Su wondered, what's with this old man's imagination? Given his vivid imagination, his horizons were not as broad as theirs. What kind of assailants had come after him in droves? Xiao told Su to tell him who perfected the sword. Let him forget if he's embarrassed. After all, his house was destroyed. He doesn't even have to give his name, just let him say which direction he went. He and Elder Xiao will find him. Xiao said that they would talk about the cut of the ruined house later. Have Su tell them which way they should go? Su was fed up with this and decided to get them off his back by pointing his finger in which direction the bully had gone. The elders told him not to be discouraged and to brace himself. Su asked why no one believed him if he was telling the truth. Su decided that he would go rest at the inn. Lying on the couch, he decided that tomorrow he would go to Lunchy's pavilion to get his assignment. Let others deal with them. It's only a few spirit crystals. And after the group stage is over, they give a day off to allow time to recover. The available passive points are enough to pump the spearhead seven more times. Mastering swordsmanship brought him too much knowledge. Therefore, he needs to transform them properly instead of getting them all at once. Su contemplated pumping in a breathing technique. But he thought it was nonsense. Su opened the system and saw that he had acquired a level 8 spearhead. Immediately, he decided to test it by hitting the wall with his hand. When he saw the hole in the wall, he said it didn't hurt. The level went up. And with it, the efficiency. This is equivalent to carrying two concealed weapons. If he faced the enemy in direct combat, he could turn his fists into blades. On the exiting cloud stage, Elder Xiao spoke as he congratulated them, the 180 warriors that had successfully displayed their talents in the group stage and had grown towards the breakthrough competition. The breakthrough competition will be divided into 18 stages, with the champions of each group stage as the leaders, and the opponents will be chosen randomly by drawing lots. Immediately, Elder Xiao used his medallion. Taking a sheet in his hand he said that there are only 64 seats in this competition. 
three consecutive victories are required to get a place. Everyone would have two opportunities to challenge, including the champions. Xiao shouted to everyone that the competition was starting, and then the guys cheered for Sis and told her to go ahead. But Brother Chow, he must defeat his sister and take the first place. The guy saw and realized that the people around him were at least at the seventh, eighth, ninth, and even tenth stages. How could he, Zhuo, stand next to these people, being at stage three? Zhuo told Brother Lu that he is nervous. He is afraid that he is the very first in the Tian San spiritual palace to reach such a competition with his low level. Lu replied not to worry. He might be the first, but he's not the only one. After all, he also has cultivation at the sixth stage. Did Su come into the arena and tell them to shout his name for support, or did they come to boo him? The system immediately showed him the new points he had gotten. Su thanked the guys for such support. Su said that he would definitely live up to the expectations placed on him. May they encourage and support him even more. The guys were saying that everyone else had already gone on stage, and he was still hanging around outside. Su's crazy, let everyone look at his idiot face, and this is the champ. And they didn't, say the guy. He's wondering too, he's only on stage 6, which is two levels below him, how did he become champion? Su warmed up to the audience, even though he was ridiculed, but he would endure it. Fine, let them mock. Continue to ridicule even more fiercely, the storm will become stronger. The guy went outside and wondered why Su still hadn't come. Seeing him on the stairs he wondered what he was doing here. After all, the others are on the stage waiting for the draw, and he hasn't even arrived at the place of competition yet. He became a champion, so now he has to do laps around the stadium and wave his hand. The guy shouted to Su and waved his hands at him. Su was surprised to see him and asked, did the competition start so quickly? Shouldn't one do a breathing warm-up after burning incense? The guy asked him, does he do a breathing warm-up? Su replied that it was like that. He was running, warming up. He needed to stretch his body so that he had the strength to compete. The guy got angry and told Su to quickly come over to him. Immediately, they headed to the arena. Su understood that in order to gain passivity points, one had to feel and sense the emotions, actions, and words of the people nearby. It's a shame you can't get anything good in an isolated barrier. It's a shame to lose so many passive points. And then the system said that the spell points were increasing. Su was surprised and pondered, should it be so obvious? Except she and he aren't here anymore, judge. The referee showed the table and said that Su would go up against D in the battle. D entered the arena and greeted Su's brother. Su looked at her and saw that things were bad now, and it looked like she was going to give up. He still had to earn passivity points. Su said that showing cowardice in the face of the enemy was taboo. If she escaped without a fight, she would become among the practitioners of spirit hardening, and if she surrendered, there would be a stigma on her life. D got excited and thanked him for the instruction. And then the system came out and added his points. The referee immediately raised his hands and said he was starting the fight. D immediately swung her sword at him. Su was surprised and shouted for her to stop. He said that as the saying goes, a noble man decides matters with words not force. He will not take out his sword. Su said that since he didn't need the sword, neither did she. How about a fist fight? D replied that she knew he possessed a ninth grade sword called Hidden Bitterness. And she knows that Brother Su is physically strong, but she has recently created a technique and would like to try it out in battle. Su was surprised, he had thrown the sword away, and she had grabbed him to kill him? Of course, women are not trustworthy, so he talked. D immediately went straight at him with the tip of her sword that Su decided to fight without and simply dodged her attack. Su realized for sure that she would be hurt if he didn't use the blade. Su immediately gave her a slash and she fell to the ground. D saw what brother Su would do and couldn't dodge as she flew to the ground with her sword. Su told her to think again, everything he said was true, he wasn't lying. She doesn't use hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques, so he won't either. He demonstrated a fair hand-to-hand -hand combat technique. People were shouting that Su was shameless. Su is so shameless, inflicted a hidden atka. 
what is he taking the battle with D4? This Su doesn't even care about her body, how could Senior D even fight him? If it was him in her place, there was no way he would put up with it. At this time in the bleachers, the guy was thinking, what's the matter with these spectators? All I could hear was how they were making him look like a villain. Su said that since he was physically strong, he would only use one hand. Su raised his hands and said that he would fight her with his feet, he was in favor of hand-to-hand -hand combat. And immediately showed her his hands. D yelled at him to shut up. Su lifted his foot and told her to think about hand-to-hand -hand combat. D realized that she had been rooting for Su before, but she didn't think he would turn out to be this kind of person. D didn't put her sword away and applied Atkas with it. In a moment, she told Su to be more careful. D directly sent him a calm white cloud attack. Su immediately ran and grabbed his sword. He looked up and watched to see where she would attack him from. And he would be able to dodge her. The guy said there was something about Su, he even dodged, though he thought he was going to get it. And it seems that Su possesses the white cloud sword technique. He had heard that Su had trained for three years, and in that time, he had become so proficient in it. Su decided to use his speed, and in a moment, he made an attack on D with his sword, and stopped at the last moment. The guys were yelling for Su to stop. It's his D. Let Su fight, if he's going to fight, he doesn't need a wooden sword. Su decided that he would give her another chance since he had failed to engage her in melee combat. Make her angry so she realizes who she really is. That way he can earn some passivity points from her. Su said that it was not a bad strike. But the aspiring sword she created only contained a single layer. Once it was blocked, all subsequent actions would be powerless. And she should improve on the first style of calm white cloud, let her try a little harder. D thought what he said made sense. Maybe he's best at fencing, not fist fighting. She had once listened, before that he had practiced the white cloud sword technique for three years. And then the system showed that the gratitude of the glasses had filled up. Sue wondered, is this girl so simple-minded? Does she think that he is mentoring her? D said once more. Second style white cloud sword technique twisted cloud stretching clouds. Sue realized that he had only studied one sword in three years. And from the looks of it, he couldn't learn anything from her movements. And then D made her attack and Sue immediately dodged with his wooden sword and set it under her cheek. People shouted and called Sue names. And threatened to kill him with a painful death for taking Sister D away from her, and told him to get his sword out of her face or he would haunt him for the rest of his life. The guys told him to fight to the best of his ability, he wouldn't let him be so gentle with her. D couldn't say anything and blushed really hard. Sue wondered what was wrong with her. Is she waiting for him to explain? Sue said that the first sword should be connected by a seven to her previous sword. If she wounded her opponent, it would be necessary to use the power of the sword to suppress him in one fell swoop. And if the enemy breaks through the network of swords, you need to close the ring using the twisted cloud stretching style. Deflect the opponent's attack, then repeat the pass technique and prepare to meet the opponent's next strike. Sue rejoiced again, for he had once again received the appreciation points. D stepped back and used the third style among the clouds and fog. Sue saw that she did, and with his wooden sword, he knocked the sword out of her hands in one second. Sue realized that there was no point in continuing any longer. She had an abnormal look in her eyes, and if they met in battle again, a spark of love might flare up. Sue said that she had lost. D got excited and said that she thanked him for his guidance. The breakout competition has a time limit, so she'd like to get some more tips in the future. Sue once again received gratitude points and already realized for sure that she was hopeless. The judge came out to say that the competition was over. And the winner of this battle was Sue. Xiao asked, had he practiced the white cloud sword technique? So what he said back then was true. Watching all the battles Xiao saw that Emo and Chang had won three victories in a row. Sue asked, how do they manage to fight so fast? But in truth, only these two can possess this kind of speed. These two are in the top of the top rankings with their innate skills. Sue started looking around and didn't see Sue and her friend. But the other girls were shouting that they loved him. The system showed him that the enthusiasm points came right after those girls' screams. Sue was surprised to see the confession. 
and wondered how it had gotten in there. I guess everyone had heard about the wooden sword. Sue held out his sword and asked, Do they want it? The girls immediately all went crazy and gave Sue the glasses. He turned around and saw that they were all crazy. The guy walked up to Sue and said he had to go. The referee announced that Sue and Lou would fight in this fight. The guys were saying that Zwa had already lost two matches. He went up to Lou and said he could do it. Let him throw off this burden and teach a level from Boss One at the same time. Stepping into the arena, Sue said that it was him. He didn't think to meet the Quan family's blade. Great, he's a master fist fighter after all, and he likes to fight with his fists the most. Sue was surprised that Lu was silent, he wasn't going to give up too, was he? Sue said that showing cowardice in the face of the enemy was taboo if he ran away without a fight. Lu immediately shouted that he was not going to surrender. Sue rejoiced and replied that he was like a man now say. It's going to be a lot of fun in this fight. Lu saw that Sue outwardly was only pretending, deliberately hiding his strength. All the facts showed that he was deceiving everyone. Since he left the recluse, he hadn't even reached stage 5, but all the subsequent words that he bragged about for intimidation suddenly turned out to be true. Immediately, the system said that the suspicion points were dripping. Sue thought, what does that mean? Is there really someone else inside the barrier? It's daytime, after all and someone is going to intimidate him. Sue told the judge that he suspected that someone unclean had sneaked into the barrier, let him check properly. The judge said, here we go again. When would it stop already? Sue told him to believe him. There is definitely a fourth person here, it might not even be human. The referee was telling him to stop holding his leg and it's time to go on stage get him to calm down. The judge couldn't stand it and in his gruff voice told him to get back on stage. Lu saw that Su kept up the pretense. Holding him up as a mere mortal, unable to discern his pretense, Lu pulled out his clothes and decided to evolve in front of everyone and reached the tenth stage. This was the peak of spirit hardening. Seeing this Su thought that Lu was pretending to be a pig to eat a tiger in this battle, Lu told Su that there was no point in pretending. He put his all into it to defeat him. The usual tricks won't work on him. Sue didn't understand Lu, what was he even talking about? Here came the moment of battle as Lu pounced on him at once. Sue stood in front of him and felt nothing, all his blows passed his body, didn't even touch him. The guys said Sue's phenomenon is a masochist. That guy's nuts. With every fist fight, he misses punches and gets punched in the face. Sue thought. What kind of fist technique is this? Is it capable of harming his innate body? Sue realized that each action only added two passive points, it was unscientific. The information panel can't be wrong. Every time you strike your body, it leaves hidden black energy in your body, which is extremely unpredictable. What a dangerous fist technique. He could be thrown off the stage like that. How inconsiderate. Every second could be the last moment. Sue saw that he couldn't even pull his sword out of the ring because of these incessant strikes. Sue was telling Lu to give him a chance. Immediately, Lu heard this and started attacking even more, but Sue told him not to hit him. Sue says he's using a spearhead. And let Lu watch to make sure he doesn't finish him off. Lu saw this attack and didn't expect how this could even happen. He saw that Sue didn't use the fist technique. So how did he manage to slash him during the quick punches? His fist of great dark tribulation strikes with double dark energy. Su isn't bleeding, so it must be his blood, Lu thought. Lu realized that Su had broken through his fist of great dark grief with his fingers. But how had he succeeded? Lu asked what kind of technique was that? Su replied that it was a spearhead. And then the system said there were suspicious points. Su thought. What was the point of asking a question if Lu didn't believe what he was saying? Then he wouldn't have asked. People have been asking how Su got out. Can't they understand why Lu stopped? There's blood dripping from Su's hands. The guy asked for a friend, is he kidding me? Can't he see Lu's spiritual ability? He has the fist of great dark tribulation on an innate level. People began to ask about the innate spiritual ability, because it was extremely rare. 
How did a disciple from the outer courtyard get the innate spiritual ability? Su realized that Lu's fist technique wasn't of the lowest level, otherwise he wouldn't be able to hurt him. The dark energy in his body won't discharge. He thinks he's going to get it at the critical moment. He's lucky he has an information panel, or he wouldn't have even noticed he was dead. Su said that a noble man settles matters with words, not force. How about we stop using fists and switch to wooden swords? Zhuo saw and realized that Lu had eaten that thing he told him about. That's why he showed himself so well. The guys laughed at Su and said that he was so funny. He had forgotten that he had talked about not using a sword last round. Just when things started to go wrong, he immediately forgot what he said. The girls were yelling that Su was so cute. They can't take it anymore. Lu didn't agree to his terms and immediately decided to attack with his fists. Su shouted at him to come back. Su used his technique and said that he was lucky to have a trump card under his sleeves. Lu stopped in a moment and said with fright that his crowning blow was coming. Dark sorrow, let's go. The guys were saying that this battle turned out to be so brutal, what a ruthlessness. Everyone was shouting for Su to hold on. The judge was saying that if Su didn't repel Lu's next strike, he would definitely die. Zuo wondered why he should intervene. Lu filled his strength into one fist, and atkavled Su in a moment. Immediately, Su let the water out of his mouth and directly spat at him. Lu didn't stop there, and the paint got in his eyes and he couldn't hit and missed with the attack. Wiping the paint off his face, he could already feel Su hugging him from behind and throwing him into a deflection. People were asking that Su was going to die with him. Lu, at the moment of the fall, shouted for him to let him go. Su wouldn't let him go, and the Nan cannonball crashed into the ground with him. At this moment, dust rose up and no one could be seen. Su stood up and said that Lu was amazing. But what kind of fist technique does he have? And he remembers Lu teaching him not to be careless. Lu stood under him and shouted at him to get off him. Su didn't get up to the last and then the referee approached him. The judge asked Su, does he need a break? Su thought about it and replied that it could be done. The judge pointed his finger at Lu and said that he would need it too. Su decided to stand up and immediately the doctors came running and carried him away on a stretcher. The judge asked Su, has he recovered yet? Su thought he was messing with him. When would he have had time to recover? Just then, the system jumped in and added his passivity points. Su realized that the dark tribulation had rushed in and he was seriously injured. There was still one more breakthrough competition left. Elder Chiao gave him a grade 10 medicinal pill, a dark golden pill. Su took out one of them and decided to breathe in her scent. He was immediately immediately thrown into a shiver. People were asking what it was doing. Is it really a healing elixir? What kind of powerful pill is this? Su couldn't resist her, and like a crowbar, he fell to the ground and flew into the clouds at this time. The guys asked him what he ate. He's shaking. He's shaking all over. Su was talking at this time about geese and no problems with his condition. The judge thought, does it look like there is no problem with his condition? The judge said if he couldn't fight anymore, he would take him to heal his wounds. Su replied not to touch him. After all, he's overly sensitive right now, geese, geese, geese. The judge held up his hands and thought it best not to touch him. The guys said Su took an aphrodisiac. He ate it during the competition. Somebody get him to calm down. VRCH immediately went to him and asked the judge if he was all right. The judge asked, is that true? The doctor replied that he did not know what kind of medicinal pill he had taken, but that it had a terrible effect. His body would recover very soon and he would get better. The judge asked, will it get better? The doctor laughed and said it was relaxation. The judge thought that even ghosts don't relax. Su came to his senses and got to his feet feeling that he seemed to have recovered, but still everything hurt. Su opened the system and saw that it had increased dramatically by 3000. That's how true love is. The referee approached him and asked if he was ready for the last round. Su replied that they should just give him enough time to regain his breath. The judge said that's great. We need to get started, because there's no time anyway. What a dog that judge is. Time's running out and he's asking if he's ready. 
Does he have to push him around like that? The judge announced that Su's opponent in this fight would be Wen Chong. Su immediately thought that this judge wanted him dead, nothing else. People were talking and were surprised that Wen was coming out to fight. After all, Su had already suffered so much, and here he was given to him. The girl asked the older man guarding the ring. Let him tell her quickly what is going on here. The guy replied that as she already knew, Boss Wen was unlucky on stage number two. He ended the fight with a draw with Chao and lost in one match. He became the champion and came in second place. The girl asked, so what of it? After all, Su is also a champion. The guy replied that Chao is two in the rankings, a master with a berth. Boss Wen on the other hand is seven in the rankings, and half a step away from being born. The girl asked, is he that tough? The guy laughed and replied that she thought that was the end of it. No, Su is a natural enemy to him. He was told to stop scheming and tell her. The guy said that they already know that Lu is a genius at stage 10, that he almost knocked Su down, and Wen Chung is his younger brother. And then everyone started to show their emotions in surprise. But that's not all. They know all about Dxian, don't they? Su thrust his wooden sword twice across that girl's face, and it's Wang Chun who's in love with her. The guys said it's a brain explosion. And now Su's in trouble. And then Wen Chong, who is the seven in the ranking of Chasing Clouds, is called Boss Wen in the outer courtyard, entered the ring. Su walked up to him and said hello to his younger brother. Chun heard this and was shocked by his words. The guys said that Su obeyed them. And the guy said that his legs would give out if he started talking to Boss Wen like that. One of the guys laughed and asked the other guy, and he wondered why Su was still on his feet? Su is very strong. Chun said Su isn't bad. Those who touch his people must be psychologically prepared. The referee waved his hand and said thunderously that the contest was starting. Immediately they went off in different directions. Chun thought that the more spiritual cloning techniques accumulated, the more doppelgangers could be summoned at a time. And since Su is going to keep him at a distance, will take his time to let things come down to the judge's decision. The guys asked, Cho Su is an idiot? He doesn't know that boss when spiritual technique takes time to accumulate. Is he just waiting to die at a distance? Lu was watching the battle at this time and said that familiar closed eyes. Chun had thought at the moment of battle that Su was going to display the swordsmanship he had shown at the last moment. Everyone has been revealing their trump cards from the beginning and he's only doing it now. Su realized that with the state of his body, he could no longer fight a protracted battle. Since a calm white cloud requires accumulation, the judge thought it would end in a deadly battle. If they were not allowed to fight, the outcome would be uncertain. If you let them fight, someone might die. The judge understood the need to let them fight. Doesn't he have a rank 9 spirit sword? Let him take it out and fight with it. Su didn't bother pulling out his real sword and decided that he would fight him with the wooden one. The guys at this point were surprised and asked, is he the one holding a wooden sword? Chun immediately used his klunkex, and swooped down on Su with daggers from different directions to leave him less of a chance. Su closed his eyes for a few minutes and the guys asked, what did he decide to close his eyes before his impending death? After all, he would never be able to open them again. The judge was saying what an idiot, he was already seriously injured so he should have given up the fight. The guys were saying that Su's wooden sword was more jubilant here, not Wen Chun's dagger. But what's going on? And then all the warriors had wooden swords in their hands. They did not understand how this could happen. Chun saw this and thought, is this really an acquired sword intent? Is it definitely Su? Su decided that there was no need to delay and with his speed, he swept through all of Chun's clones and tore them apart. Jun asked, how come? Didn't he temper his body? How could he possess such terrifying swordsmanship? Lu realized that if he hadn't interrupted Su's attack with the Dark Sorrow technique when he took Hidden Bitterness, he would have been chopped into mincemeat. Su reached the cum all the way down and pounced on Chun. The guy didn't hesitate and used the spiritual barrier. Chun didn't hit him, and stopped at the last moment with his sword at his throat. Without giving him a chance, Su told him to surrender. One sword, one word. 
the seventh-ranked chasing clouds were defeated. Sue's legs began to tremble and he realized that he had drained all of his spiritual power after swinging his sword. Let him hold on and not fall. The guys said that seventh in the chasing clouds ranking, Boss One from the outer courtyard had lost. Lu had gotten by with an injury, and Boss One had lost in swordsmanship. Su dared to put a wooden sword to D, but even knowing this, Boss One was helpless. Chun could not endure such humiliation and decided to attack him from behind with his dagger in hand. The judge shouted at Su to dodge. One, tell him to stop. The competition is already over. And then the system said to make a hidden attack and points were awarded. And then Su turned around and attacked first. Everyone was surprised at this moment, and couldn't believe such a thing. After all, Su had killed Chun in front of everyone. Chun felt Su pierce his chest with his hand. Yes, how was that even possible? Su was yelling for help to come. And asked Chun why he was helping. Su took out a pill from his pocket and told Chun to eat it immediately. The judge told him it was useless, he was already dead. Hearing those words about death, Su was lost in the dimension, after all, he didn't want to do this. Su thought, is even the life of a spirit tempering master so fragile? Died from being pierced? The judge asked, is this his first kill? Let him get used to it. The judge told him not to worry it wasn't his fault. Even if he was the first to launch a surprise attack, the fault lies with him because he couldn't stop him. Sue will be all right. Let him return to rest and leave the rest to him. The guys were asking, is Chun seriously dead? This is the first murder in the outer courtyard in ten years, right? They insist on excluding Sue from the competition, something like this is unforgivable. That's right, this is a battle between students, not a massacre. The guys were telling one of the guys to shut his mouth. Chun's stealth attack may have failed, but he still pierced him. Su even gave him a pill. And the referee had yet to call the end, so when Chong attacked within the rules. Su, on the other hand, is an inhuman barbarian. Into the Goose Lake, there is a beautiful view of the outer courtyard of Tianxiang's spiritual palace, surrounded by weeping willows. The lake is surrounded by heart-shaped white jade railings. The water inside is amazingly transparent and filled with spiritual energy. And that's thanks to the spiritual goose that swims upstream. Elder Chiao raised it with care. Su had been to this place and said that perhaps a similar thing was true in this world. Life is like a stone. No matter how big it is, it cannot make big waves if it sinks in a goose lake. Su wondered if he regretted it. No. Su didn't regret killing one by mistake. When he came to this world, killing was destined to become the norm. What he felt and what made him lonely was just sympathy and reflection on the fragility of lives. In his past life, subjected to endless torture in a whitewashed chamber, he still felt the desire to live. Su, valued life more than most people in this world. And now he had ruined one of those precious lives. Once you go for it, you have to be prepared to suffer the consequences, even if they are beyond anyone's control. At the moment, Su smiled and thought that he had unknowingly broken through to the seventh stage of spirit hardening. He breathed a sigh of relief at the moment, because he had finally killed someone, and he might as well get used to it by now. That night, Su stayed at the Goose Lake until morning. In the morning, he went home to get some rest. The elder approached him and asked, Is he looking at the outer courtyard? Su was startled by his voice, for he hadn't even expected this. The elder asked him, Didn't he want to watch the tournament of chasing clouds? And then Su turned around and was very surprised and asked, Turns out he's that senior? The elder said he felt sorry for him, he heard many geniuses had appeared at the competition. What was the name of that animal? He killed a man, too. Young people have hot blood. But it's okay, he didn't come because of that guy, he came because of him. Su asked in surprise, him? The elder said, he knows all about him. Elder Xiao was told about the two geniuses from the outer courtyard, and also about the sword master that was able to learn the acquired sword intent. Except that he liked Su more than the others. Su thought, what kind of nonsense is this old man talking? Mentioned four people, two of whom were him. The elder said that Su had an innate body, and he was right. He searched for him for several days, 
and even went around the entire outer courtyard. Didn't expect him to seem here. As expected from the kid who caught his eye. He has taste. Sue realized that he was contemplating life, not goose watching. The elder said he noticed Sue when he passed by here last night. He watched him all night. He's a very good kid with great determination. Even if he was bitten by mosquitoes or cursed, he didn't even move, didn't even turn around. And he recognizes that Sue is like him in some ways. Sue remembered that in the middle of the night, he often felt a chill on his neck, as if someone was breathing down the back of his neck. An ordinary old man from the Tian San spiritual court? He's definitely a great cultivator. The elder said he was too chatty, doesn't the guy want to say anything? Sue replied, didn't the old man tell him to keep quiet? I have to disappoint him. The young and hot assassin the old man was talking about is him. He also learned the intent of the sword, and he also possesses the innate body. And his name is also Sue. He's already been mentally traumatized, thank you. He's going to participate in the Chasing Clouds tournament, not watch the battles. The elder grabbed his hand and told him to wait. Sue was telling the elder to let him go. He hadn't even eaten dinner or taken Anna the previous evening. The elder asked, does he really have that much talent? Sue replied that he believed him, so he demanded proof. The elder took something out of his pocket and replied. That the boy was good. Speaking confidently like him, so he decided that Sue was telling the truth. And told him to eat it. Sue thought this old man was sick. Came out of nowhere started praising him, and then pulled out his seed and offered to eat it? The elder told him to eat it. It's all right. It'll hurt, but since he has an innate body, he can endure it. Sue took it in his hands and examined it from every side. The elder told him to eat it. Because it was a useful thing, Sue thought that the old man hadn't given him poison or an aphrodisiac to screw him, had he? He immediately threw it in his mouth and swallowed it. Sue asked him what was next. The elder laughed and replied that there was nothing further. The old man did not communicate with him further and in a moment disappeared before his eyes. Sue didn't understand what it was now, and then Sue started to say that his body was becoming so strange. What is this nasty feeling? Sue shouted for someone to come to his aid, for he was getting worse let them save him. The news of Sue committing murder quickly spread overnight throughout the outer courtyard. People were shouting in the arena for them to start already, what was taking so long? Finally, the moment had come. The guy said, who knew? He skipped the first killing in the outer courtyard for brother Chow and sister M.O. Elder Xiao came out and said that he thought everyone had heard about the death that happened yesterday. People said that even his name wasn't even mentioned in this incident. They don't want to make a fuss. It turns out that Linfa Pavilion has suspended Su from the competition. Xiao said that he now wanted to remind them all, the Tian San Spiritual Palace had provided everyone with a comfortable environment to improve, and never wished for anyone's death. Eventually, upon completion of their training, they will have to go out into a world where death on the Holy Spirit continent is commonplace. Every competition is an obstacle in the outside world, so they have to give their best effort, but he also hopes that they can master the measure. This measure is life and death, morality and foundations in their hearts. Xiao wasn't this verbose before, but things had changed now. After all, he was no longer a murderer of tens of thousands of people, but a great elder of Tianza spiritual palace. Xiao said it was time to get to the point. The 64 semi-finalists will face off in the decisive battle. There will be a draw on the light screen. Each group will consist of two people, the fight will last no more than 15 minutes. Let them try to give it their best while they have time. Xiao raised his hand up and said that he was declaring the competition open. But then Su came running in and told them to wait. People were saying he was sick. He was even lucky that Elder Xiao didn't bring him to justice. Was he going to argue? At this time, the judge said, here he comes. It's the same Sue he told me about. Let them look at him, he's obviously going to do something. He's just driving him crazy. He's even willing to bet a spirit crystal that even Elder Xiao won't be able to stop him. One of the judges said it wasn't. The scariest thing about this guy is his unpredictability. 
You never know what he's gonna do in the next second. Xiao asked, what's wrong? If it's nothing important, believe it or not, he will personally deal with him. Su told the chief justice to help him. He has no idea what that damn old man fed him. As soon as the scarlet seed entered his stomach, a burning aura immediately erupted from there, and several meridians in his body were burned, if this continued, he would simply die. As soon as the tournament opened, the best doctors and pharmacists of the drug pavilion immediately rushed to the wrong place to provide timely assistance. Su told the head judge to help him. He's taken a drug, suspend him from the competition. He needs to be examined by the medical staff immediately. Xiao thought that Su had taken a drug? There's no one in this competition who hasn't taken such a thing beforehand, and there isn't even a rule that says he can't use elixirs. Xiao got angry and told him to get out of here. Su replied that if it wasn't like this, he wouldn't have even come to him. He really needs help. Xiao wondered what was going on. Xiao told him to come over and placed his palm on his chest to feel his body. He took her hand away from his body and she began to burn. The guys asked if he had taken a drug that he could hurt even an elder. It's crazy, he's seriously drugged. And he's letting himself get caught. Apparently, what he said is true. So he took a big dose too. Xiao looked at his hand and asked, sizzling firefly seed. Elder San is crazy. Doesn't it burn and destroy innately the body? Xiao told Su that this useful thing is like a treasure to him. There was absolutely no harm from it. Su realized that not even a god could stop him. Just what did he say about it burning the innate body? Su told him that he heard everything. Xiao laughed and replied that the guy was very hard of hearing. Xiao sighed and told Su to go rest. After all, he needs to get through this. And then the system showed that he had received encouragement. Su realized that it wasn't the words he needed, but the medical staff. He doesn't want to get burned. Su pondered, why such ruthlessness? It was as if they didn't have enough nursing staff. A family of sizzling fireflies can burn an innate body. And who the hell is Elder San? For some reason, that name seems vaguely familiar. Su immediately said that this was an accessory to a crime. That terrifyingly burning aura began to penetrate his si chi as it thinned. So it could also burn his si chi. He doesn't understand why that old man wants him dead. Xiao said something about a treasure first. Maybe the fucking old man wanted him to start perfecting it. Su immediately remembered Xiao saying that he was destroying his innate body. Su said that he still had a competition to participate in. And then he came up with the idea that perhaps he could get rid of his anxiety in the heat of battle? And this idea seems feasible. And then in the arena, the judge said that Chao would win. Su seeing this technique was surprised that he used ice to win. He thought this guy swung his sword in his direction. A convenient ice blast. Just then, the judge said that Su vs Zhang Fu was coming out next. The guys were also surprised that Su was coming out. Let everyone keep their eyes open, the masochist Su comes out. After a couple minutes, Su came to Xiao and said that he would overpower him and the elder would give him medical attention. What kind of participant is this? Who does he think the judge is that he runs up to him like this and starts a conversation? At this time, the judge was telling them to just look at him, Elder Xiao had just arrived and he was already bothering him. Xiao told Su to go back to his seat. Su said to look at his body, it's heated to red hot. He is also a participant and has the right to receive treatment. Xiao asked, what did he care what he took there before the competition? He would have wanted to give him treatment, but they couldn't say that no matter how top-notch the medical staff was, there was nothing they could do. Su said that he might not care about something like this but if he got injured, they would still have to provide treatment. According to the rules, they would have to restore it to its best condition. Xiao told him to get out of here. Su immediately shouted for Zhang Fu to quickly approach him, it was time to start their battle. Su lost his temper and asked, where is Zhang Fu? Let him go up to the arena and fight him. The guy said he thinks if you don't admit defeat, you'll regret it. This is Su, a famous dark horse with a high reputation after two geniuses. Let the kid look at him, he's drugged up too. Didn't he see him kill one? Let him not act presumptuously. 
If he goes up there, he'll just be torn to pieces, and then everyone will focus on his mangled body. The boy replied that he had defeated the genius yesterday. Would it be embarrassing to admit defeat right after meeting him? The other guy asked, what's there to be ashamed of in front of outsiders? The guy replied that he probably couldn't even penetrate his defense. The second guy, leaving, told his friend that he was a fool. Su asked, is he Zhang Fu? Su saw that he was tall and muscular, and his fists were the size of a punching bag. Great, so he wouldn't have to hold back in a fight. Fu said that he welcomes Elder Su, he perfects the golden body so his defense is excellent. And hopes that brother Su will not refuse advice. Su was surprised to hear about the golden body. Isn't it a protective spiritual technique? He's separating it like hell. Why is he even perfecting this technique? He's already got an awesome physique. And then Xiao said that the competition was starting. Su realized that he needed to force his opponent into action, or else his plan would go to waste. Fu smiled at Su's nods, and decided to use the golden body technique. Su also got into the same pose with him and started trolling him. Guys were asking what those two are doing in the middle of a contest. What the hell? Fu's golden body technique is his last counterattack. What does Su do? Doesn't he have any trump cards? Let him start attacking before time runs out. Xiao looked at them and thought, what's wrong with them? The competition was already in progress. He told the contestants that the time for the competition was 15 minutes. Su saw that Fu was determined. He seemed to be planning to do nothing. So his plan went smoothly. Would he really have to engage in battle to release the heat in his body? He could attack, but he's afraid he won't make it. Su asked Xiao if he wanted his help. Xiao laughed. Su said that believe it or not, if he attacked, Fu might die. Fu realized that if there were hard feelings between them, let them decide for themselves. Why are they bringing him into this? Xiao told Su to attack already. If Fu dies that he lost the argument. He thought that this boy also dared to threaten him. Fu realized that his business was bad and he was no bet. He is a simple and living man like all of them here. The judge said that Elder Xiao is angry. Only Su is capable of such a thing. He can even afford to talk to the elder like that. Su asked Xiao, is he sure about this? Su immediately released the energy from his hands and a mist formed around them. Su said that he had taken a drug and no one could handle him. Xiao smiled and asked him, is that it? At this time, Fu realized that he was in danger and needed to be rescued. After all, he could die too. People said that Fu had won a three-win streak in the breakthrough competition, but in front of Su, he couldn't even move. Fu told Su to show leniency, let him not take what he said seriously. Let him save face. Su realized that they didn't want to treat him themselves. Su told him to enjoy the last moments of his life. Xiao saw that he thought Su was just joking, but what if he meant it? Immediately, Su attacked Fu right in the chest. Was Su surprised at the fact that Fu was able to withstand his five-point punch? And now since the opponent's defense could withstand the blow, there was no need to save himself, let Fu be saved. Fu saw his strength and said that he had to endure. He will not be disgraced at all if he admits defeat after such a blow. Su looked at him angrily and said one punch, one palm. And nothing else is needed. At the last moment, Fu shouted that he was giving up. But it was already too late, for Su had charged the entire clip of the attack. Before he could even touch the target, Fu flew out like a cork and sealed himself into the ground from the force of the blow. Fu caught fire in the moment from this and Xiao immediately shouted to the doctors to get him help immediately. The doctors immediately ran to him and began to extinguish him with their own forces, because he could have been burned alive. Su felt the burning force in his body disappear slightly as he struck out. Even though it hurt, at least he was still breathing. Su told Xiao that he had stopped his hand, otherwise he would have died. People said that he really only struck one blow with his palm. Fu is not only pathetic, but a laughing stock. Made it all the way to the 64 semi-finalists and ended up losing to a guy. But also in their minds was that maybe it was all the drugs? Just let them look at his incandescent air waves, 
it was immediately clear that it was not part of his own powers. Sue left the arena and opened the system thinking, how did they rise to 43 so quickly? 003? How did he get so many? After all, yesterday after the breakthrough competition, they had only reached 10,000. How did they grow so fast in just one morning? After receiving the information about the burning firefly seed, Sue was surprised. After eating it in the morning, his body felt like it was on fire all the time, and from the system's point of view, it was considered an attack. After three hours, Sue reflected that there were 60 minutes in one hour. And there were 60 seconds in a minute, totaling over 20,000 seconds. Over 20,000 passivity points. The judges approached him and asked him what was wrong. Sue stopped them and asked, could they tell him how many seconds there were in a day? The judge replied that there were 86,400 seconds in a day. When Sue heard these numbers, he was completely surprised. According to the judge's instructions, regardless of his status and requirements, one should simply ignore him, treating him as a child. As expected of the judges, they did not fail. Sue sniffed the pill again and said that this chi gene would soon be over by now. The power of the seed is extraordinary, but what successful person is not accompanied by intense pain? Once he focuses his attention on it, can he enjoy the waste? Sue said that if the judge goes to Elder Shao, that head judge on the stage, let him ask him for some chi gene pills. And let him remember to take them back. The judge thought, what is Sue thinking about the pills now? Sue said he would tell them the three sort secret, let them memorize it. First, if he doesn't agree, have him say the nursing staff refused to give them to him. He's a participant too, so he may not be able to cope without them. The judge thought, who has the guts to talk to Xiao like that? He's an elder of Linfa Pavilion, not a vegetable seller. Secondly, Sue said, if still agree, have him convey that Sue remembered that he was an accomplice to the crime. The staff member told him to go himself. Sue asked, why would he go? The employee has to do his job, after all. Later, he would face another battle, and they should know that the higher a person's status, the more special their personality is, and there is no reason why they can't be of assistance. An employee has seen how hard it is for him. He wants to change jobs. He's really fed up with it. Sue worked very hard to accomplish something and here he was able to go to the tip of innate to level 1. Sue realized that when there was no money, he could never imagine the happiness of wasting it. It's only been three days, and he's already got over 40,000 passive points. And he got rid of the excess. Sue said that one should test the power of the spearhead after pumping it up to innate level. Immediately, he swept his hand over the ground. But he missed a little and the beam of the point passed over his foot, and cut his new shoe. Sue understood that every passive skill pumped to an innate level changed significantly. And now that the sharpness has become innate, every part of his body is exceptionally sharp. A true artifact for an assassin that can't be defended against. Sue realized that if he kicked his opponent during the fight, he would simply chop him in half. Since it's a passive skill, there's no need to cast a spell, no foreplay. So how do you defend against it? And then it occurred to him that if his opponent could stop a kick with his foot, could he stop a kick with his hair? He immediately raised the crystal in front of him and thought, was it normal to be bedazzled by such a brilliant idea? From how a passive skill is used, it can become an active skill. A little scary even, Sue decided that he had spent 10,000 passivity points, and if it didn't work out, he would use some more. Sue immediately decided to put all his keys in the system, and lined them up in order. Sue prepared himself and shouted loudly that it was time to go. And used his incarnation of luck. Immediately, the system replied that she thanked him for visiting. Sue was confused and asked how that was. He fell to the ground because he didn't understand how such a thing could even happen, and not award him any honors. The servant came over and saw that spy was mad, slashing the floor, and with his hair. He was having fun, so why did he suddenly fall down? This is very important. His servant jerked him left and right and yelled at him to come to his senses and wake up. After all, hadn't the chief justice said Sue was kind of poisoned? It was the first time he had ever seen someone use their hair like that. Sue tells the boy to leave. Because he doesn't want to see him. 
let him be alone. Su squatted down and let a tear fall as he pondered that whole ten thousand passivity points. He had just blown the money to the wind, he was bullying him. But he still has thirty thousand left. How about a breathing technique and a sword technique? But he refused and said he didn't believe in ten more failures. Su took out all his keys and said that he wouldn't shit himself this time, after all, he has the epitome of luck exists. Su said that he couldn't afford to be left with nothing. And then the system said that a better basic passive life cycle skill. Su rejoiced and said that he spent 20 keys to get one passive skill with the level acquired, was it worth it? Definitely worth it said Su. After all, you can pump up a level in the future, or you can pump it up casually, but without abilities, it's all a fart. And then the servant watched him and said he was crazy. He wondered how much happier a man could be alone with himself. Could he not keep up with the youth of today? Su opened the system and saw that he was in the basic passive skills section. Basic passive skills might not be as functional. Just look at the breathing technique in the same section. The life cycle, literally, the continuous life force. If that's the case, wouldn't it be of the greatest help to him right now? The sizzling firefly seed has energy the size of a fingernail, but the energy itself is so terrifying that it can't even be quantified. Blood, vein, bone, all the cells contained therein are subject to the burning power. Blood and flesh were burned to chard, and meridians were baked to destruction. Thanks to the breathing technique, he only needs to take a breath of the qi gene pill to recover instantly. Now the qi gene pill had been depleted and the muscles and bones in the body had collapsed, but were now repairing themselves. This is the life cycle effect. Su said that the role of the new passive skill was to heal wounds. This kind of help was simply incommensurable. He still had 20,000 passive points left, which could be exchanged for five skill points to swing that skill. Su was able to raise his life cycle to level six. And recovered from his wounds in less than a minute. Su said that it was a divine skill. Su decided not to stop there and used five skill points to pump up. And was able to go to life cycle innate at level one. Su realized that the resolution rate of the sizzling firefly seed had aligned with the life cycles. Struggling with each other they split in half. A frightening recovery speed, Su thought. The sizzling firefly seed only took half a day to consume two qi gene pills, which were ten pieces in total. And his life cycle recovery rate is equal to his. Doesn't that mean he has more to recover? How many resources can he save that way? And then Su swung his sword across his arm and the guy was saying that he passed out for no reason and then started injuring himself? Su is definitely crazy. Su saw that with the life cycle at the innate level, recovery was faster than with the qi jin pills. The servant saw that he was indeed able to obtain the jing jin pills from Xiao. And ten vials as well. It's like a dream. He got all these pills for free. Su saw him smiled and asked, he had come after all? With ten vials in his hands, Su asked him, isn't it cool? Is it the highlight of his life to talk to a Linfa pavilion elder like this? The servant answered nothing and waved his head. Su said, Will there be something else, there's something else cool. It will all be his. The servant replied that they were all Su's brothers and he couldn't take them all. Su said it's okay, let him take them all. Su asked him again, Is he sure he doesn't want to? The servant replied that he was sure he did. And then a second one came and Su told him to come over here and it's all his now. Su told them to be calm, after all, it's just them here, no one will know that he separated them. He's not going to play a prank on them to ruin their mood at all. Su said two vials per person, non-negotiable. Let them take them immediately. Su gave it to them in his hand and told them to take it. And then Xiao shouted to Su to come up to the arena immediately. He immediately heard this and immediately stood up. The others said they would never have thought he was such a man, handsome and thinks outside the box. Even though he goes crazy sometimes, it's cute in its own way. In the square of exiting clouds, the main arena came out Su versus Zhou, in the last battle. They looked at each other and Zhou said that acquired sword intent and innate physique and he recognizes its power. Zhou held out his long sword and said that his goal was to rank first in the rankings. Therefore, 
he would fall from his sword. The guy from the sky looked at the battle and said that it was an acquired blade intent? When did Zhou have time to master it? And seeing his equanimity, it's clear that Su is in danger. With that blade intent, he could make someone with innate nervousness. He thought his words about first place were empty bluster, but now he sees that they are not. Xiao thought that the guy had been hiding his abilities all this time and hadn't shown his full strength in the qualifying stage and the breakthrough competition. The boy thought to himself, what is this situation? Acquired blade intent? Also calm like this? He only wields the first style of calm white cloud, draining the spiritual power of the sword. Zhou said that a loser can't lose. Su told him that he shouldn't be so tongue-tied. And then people started making fun of Su for being the old man in the outer courtyard. But. In fact, the only one left from that group. The guy asked him, isn't Su's real big brother? Theoretically, he is, but he has been in the outer courtyard for three years. The other guy replied that he didn't know what the explosive effect was related to, but it felt like someone had possessed the dark horse. Guy said that thinking about it from that perspective, he's just as strong as Mo and the others, they're all like little brothers and sisters to him after all. Xiao put his hands up and said that the competition was starting. Zhou said immediately for him to stop. Xiao said well, what kind of contestants? It's Su's bad influence each of them is so strange. Zhou said that there was one thing he wanted to clarify before the fight. Yesterday's incident, attacking him sneakily was a shameful act. But he, Su didn't have to take his life. The punishment would have been enough, but he still commits ruthless murder. And it seems the opponent in front of him named Su is a despicable and unscrupulous villain. Su replied that this was the very reason he wanted to voice before the fight, making him look like an assassin. Jean said he wasn't talking about killing, he just wanted to explain everything. Su asked, did he see what happened in the arena then? Did he get a good look? He doesn't know anything, he just came in and started talking nonsense, throwing mud at him. If he says he did it on purpose, how would he look at him? Jean waved his hand and replied that no, it wasn't like that at all. Su told him to stay focused. He knows his next sentence will be him just clinging to his words. Jean replied that this was not what he wanted. Su said that people like him always stand on the moral high ground and blame others, and never think that those very words are like a sharp blade to others. Su asked him, well? Why doesn't he speak when he should speak? And speaks when he doesn't have to? If he can't speak, does he take action? Su saw through that Zhou is the type of person who thinks with his muscles. Because of his burgeoning sense of justice, he is very fiery seeing only the surface of the picture. Su saw that Zhou looked hesitant and ready to admit defeat. He changed his mind. Su said to Zhou, he might look at everything superficially, but as a worthy spirit-tempering master, once he enters the arena, there is no way he should admit defeat. He will make it clear to him, if he does not engage in battle, he will be tabooed. If he runs away without a fight, he will be humiliated as a master of tempering the spirit, if he surrenders, he will put a stain on his life. Zhou told Su that he would accept his instruction. And then Xiao was very surprised because Su's plan had worked. Immediately, Su and Zhou didn't drag it out and started throwing punches at each other. Zhou got excited after the first hit and said that was great and could continue. Su realized that for the first time, his innate body was not pleasing him with its strength, and even his efforts were in vain. If he couldn't face him, the acquired intention of the hard steel blade. If with his short sword he faces his long blade, his face would be stained with blood. Fighting him with his innate point can chop him in half. So he uses sword techniques to hone his acquired sword skills. Zhou immediately pounced on him, at this time Su entered under his subconsciousness and immediately countered his strength against him in a moment of attack. Zhou didn't see it and was still able to dodge his blade, and step aside slightly to gain acceleration. Su felt his advantage, and no longer dodged the attacks, but struck out on his own. Zhou didn't give up either and countered Su's attacks very well that even they were on par. The guys said that the acquired intent of the blade versus the acquired intent of the sword. They are so thrilled by this. If there is an accident, either Zhou's throat will be blocked or Su's legs will be broken. An exciting battle. Zhou was telling Su to face his nine tides blade. 
it's a continuous blade technique. One wave is higher than the other, getting stronger and stronger. Zhou immediately raised his waves the moment Su watched this whole spectacle and entered his mind. Zhou didn't pull it all, and directed that water straight at Su. Everyone looked at the arena and didn't realize what would be left of them. Xiao was also looking at the battle and didn't get distracted for a single second. After all, this was a magnificent battle for him. Zhou entered this water with his sword, and was on his way to attack. Su stood still and waited for the right moment for him. And then the system came out and said that Su was attacked and his passivity points increased. He realized that Zhou's skill in blade intent was unmatched. It can do serious damage to even a minor cut, and wounds from the power of the tide are even harder for ordinary people to heal. Su was glad that the life cycle's terrifying healing ability had revealed itself in time. Worthy of a basic passive skill, blood regenerates at an astonishing rate. Jean chuckled and asked Su, he's not going to give up, is he? The power of the Nine Tides Blade not to mention his innate abilities. The boys were screaming for Su to hold on. Let him get up and get rid of him, let him not knock himself out of the arena. Su's body was covered in blood, but it was all an illusion. He tried his best to pay a lower price for the chance to survive the blade. At this frantic pace, the life cycle had almost completely restored his condition. Using Zhou's sword techniques, he constantly repelled all of his attacks and saw what he had learned. Su decided in a moment that he would invest two skill points to pump up his sword wielding. Immediately, his level rose and his sword began to glow. Su didn't spare him, and at the appropriate moment, he launched a crushing attack that made Zhou fly backwards. The guys asked, did Su break through now? It seems that with the intense suppression, he made a strike reflexively. And that last sword strike was very similar to White Cloud's second style of swordsmanship. Su had made a breakthrough, and this sword was the beginning of D. However, he had never practiced the second style, so he changed his swordsmanship in a hurry. Xiao was surprised that Su decided to show off his creativity right in battle and changed his swordsmanship technique. Su told Zhou to attack without stopping. Zhou replied that was exactly what he wanted to do. Zhou used the same attack again and raised the water above his head and directed it at Su. Su wondered if this Zhou had any other trump cards? He wouldn't be able to match this technique given his current level of swordsmanship. And then Su decided that he would use three skill points and pump up his sword wielding. Zhou looked at him and didn't understand what Su was doing. People were asking what was the matter. Could Su use Zhou's blade technique? But how is this possible? Isn't Zhou's swordsmanship style the spiritual ability of a mountain-turning immortal? How did Su manage it? Su couldn't steal from the master on stage, could he? And now it's clear, Su is the real monster. Su used the calm white cloud version number 2 attack. And Zhou matched him with the flipping immortality mounts. Xiao looked at the fight and said, he hesitated for so long only to discover the sword. He's already a dead man. Su stepped into this attack and redirected it in the other direction with his sword so that it wouldn't hit him. Su thought, what kind of demonic technique is this? He turned his innate moving mount against him. Although this style had exhausted his spiritual power, he only needed to manifest another blade to neutralize the shockwave of the immortal moving mountain. Zhou saw that Su's swordsmanship was like the antelope's horns leaving no trace. Such an immortal with a sword is comparable to his grandfather who put him on the path of the blade. Is it possible to use a sword like this? Su saw that Zhou seemed to have forgotten that he was in a battle right now. Immediately, Zhou's forehead was bleeding from the last attack. Su understood that this was a fight, so he needed to respect his opponent. Immediately, Zhou made that very breakthrough. Zhou couldn't control it, and with his strength, he pushed Su away from him, who flew backwards. Su wondered what else it was. Breaking through to innate level? Is that bastard cheating? Su realized that Zhou was already a demon at level 10 acquired, how terrible would he be at innate level? Zhou said that he thanked senior brother Su for his leniency, he had behaved rudely. Getting hit with the sword, he finally realized that Elder Su was actually a noble man. And then Xiao heard all of this and said that the competition is over, Su wins this battle. Zhou thought he was talking about his opponent's cruelty before the fight started, 
but he ended up getting his life back from the cruel Sue. Zhou gave his name and said that he had decided that he would become Sue's friend. Sue realized that Zhou had broken the barrier during his breakthrough to innateness. The information panel immediately became filled with information, but Sue didn't care about that. At this moment, he wanted to hurry back and figure out his swordsmanship. Xiao saw that immortal sword, antelope horns that left no trace. He completely abandoned his spiritual abilities and forgot about swordsmanship, using his creativity and reaction in battle. To calculate the opponent's strikes, isn't that the strongest state of development mentioned by the eighth immortal swordsman? Xiao saw and realized that this was the ascension of the shadow of the strongest swordsman. Immediately, he began to calm down the fans. Xiao raised the medallion and said that the competition was over. Everyone saw with their own eyes who was the winner. At this time in Goose Lake, Su thought that in the battle with Di that day, the opponent's sword seemed to be full of weaknesses. That's why he thought Di wasn't very good at swordsmanship. When he thought about it, he realized that he was superior to ordinary people. Just how did he manage to evenly learn the Tao of the Blade? Zhou is the only one who was able to put pressure on his creative thinking. After all, simply using creativity in combat seems more sensible and natural than using spiritual abilities. Su realized that if he had a sublime understanding of the path of the sword, perhaps he should continue moving in the same direction, but obviously, he didn't have that option. At this time, something indescribable flew over Dan Tian, but it was like a meteorite. Su said that one would have to completely purify this thing, Otherwise even with the life cycle, the body would still be fine for a while, but the cultivation would be destroyed. Su opened the system and saw that in the battle with Zhou, he had used 5,000 points to pump up his sword wielding, and there should have been no more than 5,000 points left in reserve. However, after roasting for more than 3 hours, the passive points had increased by more than 20,000. Su called that old man names for setting him up and decided he was gonna perfect that shit all night. Su drank the pill and decided that he would put five skill points into the breathing technique. Immediately, he raised it to level six, but he didn't feel any change after pumping for five levels. Perhaps this is the only passive skill that doesn't react to pumping, but the breathing methodology is very intimidating. He hadn't planned on pumping it at all, particularly to the innate level, but there's no way to do that now either. If he learns to perfect the sizzling firefly seed, the chi gene pill will fail and he will freeze to death. It was the pill inside him that began to take effect, and the effect was very strong, for Su's face was bleeding. But it was as if ordinary spiritual power possessed the attribute of fire. He had mastered the power of the attribute at an acquired level that only innate masters comprehended. If he could refine it, wouldn't he be able to defeat innate masters with his acquired foundation? Su thought that the old man had fed this thing to him with good intentions. If he could ignite the seed of sizzling fireflies, his strength could increase rapidly. Su asked himself, how could he increase his speed? Maybe he could improve it by pumping up his breathing technique. And then Su realized that it was a breathing technique. This skill was not related to mental ability at all, after all, it was a basic passive skill. Perhaps it has other uses. Su began to repeat about his breathing technique and pondered. Su realized that he had only used inhalation in his breathing technique before while improving and healing his wounds, and had never even half used exhalation. Since it is possible to inhale energy by absorbing the power of elixirs, can the energy in the seed of the sizzling fireflies be removed from the body by releasing energy? Su thought for a moment and decided that his heart shouldn't prevent him from taking action. Immediately, he decided to inhale and exhale. Inside, his energy began to overflow and release his blood outward through his mouth. The elder immediately stood on the tree and felt that guy was dying. He must be helped immediately. Su didn't stop there and decided to go all the way at the moment his half-body started to freeze. Su didn't give up and at the last moment, he succeeded and the chain of energy was broken. Su took the pill in his hands and breathed it still deep into his system. Everything around him began to crumble, and turn to dust. The elder immediately ran up to the place and watched from afar what was going on here. And immediately he went under the water. Su came to his senses and looking at himself asked, was he able to survive? 
but the life cycle along with the breathing technique fully manifest the terrifying recovery from the qi gene pill. Su said that he had gotten too powerful a restorative power. Pain like pain. Torment like the drag of the first cigarette. He decided that he wouldn't procrastinate and get it over with as soon as possible, he would start perfecting the power of the seed directly. The old man watched and wondered what kind of monster he was. Can't he feel pain? He had accidentally discovered this treasure, and only by possessing a strong will did this boy have a great future ahead of him. Upon hearing these explosions, the Linfa Pavilion's law enforcement guards ran up. The old man immediately stepped in front of them and told them to get out. The guards were surprised and asked, Deputy Chief? When did Elder San return to the city? The older man told the others to shut up and kneel down and say that everything would be accomplished. San realized that Goose Lake was destined to be calm this night, but the white jade railing was in need of repair. At noon the next day, the guy asked the others, the spiritual palace was doing renovation last night? It's so noisy, can he even hear him? The guy replied that it was in the direction of Goose Lake. His yard was nearby and someone was practicing martial arts there. If it weren't for that, he would have thought a foreign enemy had invaded. The other guy said he hadn't heard anything, even though he too lives near Goose Lake. And then the guy apologized and said that he was just remembering that he had a soundproof formation installed. There's nothing you can do about the fact that he has money. Sue heard all this and realized that after a night of cultivation, the flames of the sizzling fireflies had completely disappeared and he was able to break through to the peak of stage 7. A breakthrough is useful, but not necessary. Sue said, he's so sleepy. He trains on weekdays and breathes while he sleeps. He hasn't slept in two days, he's still getting used to it. And then a guy came in and told Sue to wake up, it was already his turn. And immediately the system added points to his scare. Sue woke up and asked the guy why the beating? The servant replied that the competition had already begun. The fans were already shouting for Sue to enter the arena. They were calling him the undefeated champion. Xiao had already lost his temper and shouted at Sue to move faster. And then he went up against Li, at the tenth stage of spirit hardening. Li said that if Sue didn't fight, it would be taboo for him. Don't fight and run. What's behind this? Lee said she watched him at the competition, he's so cool. Will he give her an autograph? Immediately, the system awarded him points for admiration. It was unexpected for Sue to find an admirer among the competitors. Xiao raised her hands and said that the contest was starting. Sue decided to concede to her to attack first and then Lee said she was giving up. Sue was surprised, after all, she had asked his line first and then decided to give up. What kind of groupie is she that she won't let him earn passivity points? Lee said that Zhang was still lying unconscious in the medicine pavilion and could not participate in the ranking fight. That's why she's not going to fight him, he wants to play a ranking fight. Xiao said that the competition is over, the victory is for Sue. The guys said they didn't even move. What about the fight? He wants to see Sue perform. The guy said he thought Lee did the wise thing, she's in the tenth stage. There must be no way Sue could have won with his stage seven. Lee held out her brush to him and asked for his autograph. Sue sighed and was surprised by such a fan and asked her where to sign. Lee showed her palm and said right there. Sue couldn't refuse her and left her autograph. And then from the podium, the girl started yelling for Lee to get off Sue's back. After all, he's her future husband. Lee started trolling her and told her that she wasn't practicing well herself, so let her be silently jealous. Sue signed her autograph and told her not to give up on anyone else when she met next, or it wouldn't be good. Lee couldn't resist his words and blushed saying no more. She looked at her hand and thanked him. Lee immediately ran away out of joy. Sue shouted at her to take her spiritual brush. A satisfied Lee replied that she was giving it to him. At this moment, Sue and Xiao were surprised by this turn of events. And then coming out of the arena the girl attacked her and told her that from today onwards she was her sworn enemy. She's gonna kick her into the air. Lee showed her the autograph and asked if she was still going to kick around. The girl cried and replied that she was jealous. She wants to cut off her arm and take it for herself. In the waiting area, Sue thought he was already in the quarterfinals. According to the schedule, 
there would be one more fight today, and if he won, everyone would have to fight for the championship tomorrow. Su thought, should he take the championship title? Zhou's fighting power peaked at the peak of acquisition, just how strong would he become with his innate level? Innate is actually a commonly used term. It contains the three realms of sod life, without dwelling, and exaltation of spirit. After the tenth stage of spirit hardening, the spirit hardening master comprehends the heavenly path and opens the garden of life in the purple palace. If successful, the power of the innate attribute can be awakened. As for what the power of the innate attribute is, we can only say that it is mysterious and varies from person to person. But there are a total of five elements that also consist of perception. These include the Chao Frost Sword and the Zhou Inborn Cutting Blade. But while his passive skills can be utilized as innate spiritual abilities, there is a limitation on the very plus most. Even if the rest of us do our best to get a championship spot, it seems unrealistic. And now right now he has five passive skills, three of which are already innate level, and the remaining two are at level six waiting to be pumped. And last time he managed to draw a life cycle, and also got three passive keys, and then bought seven more keys to do ten spins at once. Su decided that he would use the other key as well, and pressing it used his incarnation of luck. And then the guys were watching him and said, here he comes again. And he told the other one to get the rescue tools ready. The servant told the guy to wait, because he wanted to watch too. The boy told him to hurry up and watch what they would do if something happened to them. Su saw that the system just thanked him for visiting, and gave him nothing. Su asked the guys, what were they up to? The guys went up to him and asked, is he okay? Su laughed and asked, what could have happened to him? But because of that broken system, it was getting harder and harder to get anything. Fortunately, he had prepared in advance, so he wasn't startled or fainted. Su told them not to understand the noise and leave. The guy told the other guy that it didn't look like his body was overheating, so the gloves weren't doing him any good. The other guy replied, who knows? maybe he really did wear them. And they kept watching him anyway. Su said it was a cheat. He just dropped 10,000 passive points like a stone into the sea. And two keys on top of that. When he first used the roulette wheel, one of the three wrenches dropped the point, and more would come afterward, but what now? Su said that they could exchange for eight more keys, and continued to spin the ten and shouted that they went to realize their luck. Just then, a sign came out and said that Su had obtained an enhanced passive skill. Su jumped up with joy and cracked the ceiling with his head. The boy said that the man was generous but sick in the head. The servant also said to take the elixir, and afterwards smash the pew and ceiling, and then fix everything out of their savings. The guy said he was a good man. There's only half of him left. They saw that Su couldn't get out and wondered if they could help him. Su realized that having broken through the ceiling he could see nothing, but in fact somehow he could see the two worried people below. To be precise, the radius is only a few meters, further the image is blurred. Su smiled his smirk and said, that's how perception is. Isn't this passive skill too strong? The figures just appear in his mind. This kind of thing can't be defended against by assassins who are going to kidnap a girl that's a useful skill. The guys asked him if he could get down, Su replied that he could easily go down, he didn't need to carry a ladder. And then he jumped down from the ceiling, and then the system said that spell points had been added. Su thought that he would use 10 skill points and put it into perception. Raising his vitals Su understood that the range of perception had expanded to dozens of meters, and the picture became clearer. Su immediately saw him being watched again. The guy asked, did Su have eyes in the back of his head? Scared the parasite out of him. Does he know they're watching him? Su realized that he could clearly see their conversation and actions. He had noticed them peeking at him before, but he didn't know what they were talking about or what they were doing. This is tantamount to putting a CCTV camera directly into your head and providing a picture directly into your consciousness. Just then, Su lit up and said, another Imba. He still has 20,000 points left, so he'll procure 9 keys for now. He'll add the remaining ones and get 10, Sue said to keep doing twists. Another skill might fall out next. And then Sue put down the key and spoke to let the embodiment of luck help him. 
let the storm rage even stronger. The system immediately gave him nothing and thanked him for visiting. And then the servant and the guy agreed and said it was time for them to grab him. The guys were dragging him around and saying he was feeling bad again, let the servant support him. Sue asked them what they were doing to him. The servant came up to him abruptly and told him that if he hadn't covered his mouth with his hand in time, he would have lost his first kiss. Immediately, the system added his passivity points and Su decided that he would go outside and watch the battle. Xiang said loudly that the battle was over, and Mu was winning. The guys said that they definitely didn't expect something like this. The guy was saying how high, he was thrown dozens of meters away. Oh my god, Zhen is falling. There's someone at the place where he fell. Su Ying understood what was going on. Even the barrier in the waiting area had been destroyed. And then Su looked back and saw that it was someone's head. Su immediately didn't play with him, and sent him back into the arena with a leg kick. The guys said that this kind of thing was normal for Su. It seems that after Boss Wen's surprise attack, he started to refine his one-handed killing technique, piercing through the heart and skull. And then the system immediately awarded him points of admiration, praise, and contempt. Soy said his hands were clean, God is his witness. You can't crack a good watermelon without a good punch. He was immediately given outrage points by the system. Sue said that guy would be brought to his senses by the medical staff. He ran into him during his fight. He's taking offense. Sue's boys thought what he was up to and stopped him and asked him what he was doing. Don't let him come any closer. After all, the guy is wounded, disabled. Sue said that he could feel his resentment towards him. The boy was surprised and thought, how could he feel that? The guy yelled for them not to leave him and led this Sue away. Sue laughed and said it was no big deal. He was just concerned about whether he was really handicapped now. The guy tells him not to worry, he's fine. And asks for another place for treatment. And then Sue laughed and Xiao said that Sue's next match is against Chao. Su looked at his stats and was very surprised by them. Su asked them, are they serious? The probability of facing an innate master in the quarterfinals was quite high. The system showed that he was being mocked. Su could see the gloating written all over this guy's face. Does he think he'll just bitch about it like that? This hatred is like an echo. Chao won't necessarily be better than him, okay, asshole? The boy asked Su what he was up to. The guys were yelling at him to stop immediately. Su asked this handicapped man what he was trying to accomplish. The guy saw his medical staff running away. And yelled at the others to get him out of here. Su grabbed him and said he was sorry, he shouldn't have hit him. But it's okay, he'll set the bones and give the pill to Chi Jin, he'll be fine. The guy was indignant and asked Su, why was he picking on him? He was yelling for help and begged to not be left with him. The healers looked at him and said, what a demon this Su is. At this time, a girl with a smile on her face entered the ring. Mu smacked him on the head and told him that Elder Xiao was calling him. Su replied that she should wait, he needed his bones set. Mu said that he was already dead. Su replied that it wasn't so he could have died by taking the Qi Jin pill. Mu asked what was the point of letting him smell the medicine but not letting him take it? And then she remembered that he didn't know how to breathe, did he? At this time, foam was already coming out of the guy's mouth, Su immediately threw a pill into his mouth to save him. Xiao yelled for Su to get up. Su turned around and looked at the girl and asked, and she? Mu looked at him with red cheeks and greeted him. Su understood and said hello to her and immediately said goodbye. Su realized that this was the quarterfinals, the third fight. Su versus Chao. Su stepped in front of Chao and asked, is this an innate attribute power? Su understood that her own strength could affect her nature, so she was unpredictable and dangerous. They stood against each other and interjected with glances. The girls shouted that the three men standing under the snowfall were adorable. Su told the judge that Chao is cheating. The competition hasn't even started yet and he's already influencing the situation here, it's not fair. Immediately the system gave him points for being mocked. Su made his case and said he was also mocking him. But they'll see who bullies who else. Xiao thought, who would even care about snowfall during a battle? 
Xiao asked Su, what made him think that? Su replied that he was cold, let him remove this snowball of his. He didn't understand the function of this snowball. Maybe he's locating, maybe he's finding the strength to strike a decisive blow. If an innate master gave up tracking, wouldn't that cut his strength in half? People were shouting that Su had taken the time to argue about some trivial matter. It's snowing, what's next? Chow said he was refusing. Su replied that it's difficult. He's good at using long-range spells, and he's good at close combat, so what kind of match will come out if he cheats? Chow asked what he was trying to accomplish. Soi asked if they could open the barrier so he could bask in the sun. Chow realized he was fucked, not warming himself in the sun. All these people gathered to watch him warm his ass. Xiao said no warming up in the sun. Since everyone said so, why don't they shorten the distance a bit and fight in close combat? Just then Su realized he was caught and asked how close. Chow replied that he didn't care about the rules. Close or far, he doesn't care. Su asked him, was he serious? Even like that? Immediately, Chow almost slipped and replied that he was correct. The girls shouted at Su to move away from him. Who would let him get close to his brother Qingtong? They looked at each other and Xiao said that the competition was starting. Su immediately launched an attack, but Ice appeared in front of him. Su realized that it was a clone, a teleportation, a substitution. And immediately used his perception. Chao appeared in front of him and said he was hitting pretty good. The system said there were points for praise. Su said he's not bad either. He thinks it has nothing to do with the snow, otherwise he would cheat out in the open. Su realized that he couldn't ignore the snowfall. It had to be done this way to make Chao a little confused. Su realized that unless he could match Chao's technique, close combat would be useless. Chao immediately decided to attack and turned his sword into an ice sword. And then in a moment Su finally realized why no one had managed his first glacier sword. Chao immediately used it and with his ice abilities, zamosed Su into an ice stone. People didn't believe that Su was frozen after two swords. Wasn't Chao too strong? He couldn't handle the first glacier sword, so he used two swords at once. Chao realized that Su had an innate physique after all. Perhaps his spiritual ice element would be able to freeze the flesh and blood of a practitioner of the tenth stage of spirit hardening, but it was unlikely to cause rigor mortis and death. Chow behind his attack decided to use the Milky Way. And immediately applied it on the ice he had previously created. Xiao saw that the acquired sword intent. He had comprehended the acquired sword intent. Before this, Zhou had an acquired blade intent and now Chang had comprehended an acquired sword intent as well. Sword intent. How on earth would Su resist him while in a frozen state? The boy was upset because Su who defeated him would fall by Chao's three swords. He can't believe it. Mu thought he had turned into an ice sculpture at the beginning of the battle. When it was over, the old man said that he would have to come down to comfort him. Su had built his plan from the beginning, and the moment he attacked, he broke the ice and managed to grab his technique. Chao was surprised, for he had seen something like this before. Before this, his immortal mountain rolling immortal style had been repelled by Su's sword, thus laying the foundation for his defeat. He didn't think he would see something like this again, and he hadn't intended to use the sword in battle to begin with. He shifted the energy of the sword into his hands. He's taunting him. Su decided to attack in return and used a folded sword style. And two calm white clouds. Su had developed this creative attack during yesterday's fight with Zhou, only this time he used a point in the light. When people saw this thing, they said it was a horror. The sword in Su's hands was ferocious, but his body was also powerful. Su thought that he would hunt down his flaws and defeat him. Immediately, he used the calmness of the white sword. This small attack wounded Chao's arm, he didn't even realize how it could happen, after all, he had set his sword down. Su saw that unknown to him was the substitution style. And decided to use his perception skills. And lo and behold, he saw it. And then Su decided to make a counter-attack, with his palm to repel Chao's counter-attack. The guys asked why Su struck his palm into the void. Immediately, Chao's head appeared in front of his palm. The guys couldn't understand how this happened. Su punched Chao. 
one got hit and the other puts in a switch. Chow realized that Su had figured out his technique of walking amongst the snows right after the first use. His gaze during the battle terrifies him. Su smiled and immediately used a spearhead attack. But Chow saw this and set his palm up. Looking at his hand Chow saw the mark Su's finger had left on his hand. He immediately walked back through the portal. Su said that there really was a problem with this snow. I mean, he said he was cheating, Xiao didn't believe it. If it wasn't for that switch, he would have defeated him by now. The girl said that no matter how it was, Su was the first to spill Chao's blood in the Chasing Clouds tournament today. Which meant, just like Su said, Chao was moving through snowflakes. If it's true, then he was cheating. The girls cheered and shouted that they believe in Su. And they know he is the best. And Su will defeat him and she will bear him a child. Su smiled and saw that it had become so lively among the spectators. They were all already cheering for him. Chow decided not to stall for time and used, walking among the snow. He immediately scattered snow everywhere with magic. Su realized that this was clearly his crowning blow. Once he was distracted for a moment, he immediately decided to take advantage of it. Su apologized to Lu and said that he had broken the covenant and underestimated the opponent. Chao picked up the moment and used the net sword style. Chao immediately raised his hands and said he was unarmed. But used the snowfall, and directed everyone to Su. Su said, what a cruel guy he was. So falling snow was not only needed for walking amongst the snow, but also for this unarmed snowfall. Although this terrifying spiritual ability is called unarmed snowfall, every falling snowflake carries murderous intent. The guys asked, he could still continue. Su just stood still and received everything on his body. Su fought with snowflakes aimed at his sword, while his body frantically recovered with a life cycle. Piercing and recovering and piercing. The pain he was experiencing at this moment felt no more painful than during the perfection of the sizzling firefly seed. Chow realized that the density of the snowflake attack under the sword intent was simply inhuman. Su saw that he couldn't stop his palm. And used the exchange of points. Su decided that he would raise his sword level. And immediately sent it straight into Chow's chest leaving him no chance. Chao immediately used his strength, and attacked back with an ice attack, turning everything around into ice. For the last time, Chao was left to use his seal. Immediately, he aimed it straight into the ice. Su couldn't get out and remained inside the ice that Chao had shoved him into. He walked over to him and regarded him. The guys were saying that such a healthy piece of ice became so small in an instant. Because of its density, the Su inside would not turn into a solid sculpture. Xiao saw this and said it was trouble. He was so wary of such deadly techniques, after all. Xiao raised his hand and said that the competition was over. And then a bright star came from the sky, which the boys all saw. It was Su's sword, which attacked Xiao with the speed of light, and hit right into his chest. The sword was so strong that it sealed Xiao to the ice, and wouldn't let go until the last. Xiao seeing this asked, is this a spiritualized sword intent? Su is at the threshold of innate sword intent. The guy said what a strong sword. Really strong. It's more than ten times stronger than yesterday. The old man thought that Su had progressed so much in just the few days he hadn't seen him. It was simply unbelievable. Su immediately came out of the ice, shattering it to pieces. Chao asked through his pain, what kind of sword technique was this? Su raised his head with a smile and replied that it was the white cloud sword technique. And then the points for suspicion were added. Su raised his hand and said that they needed help. Immediately, all the doctors came over to save them. Su told them not to worry about him, but to help Chao first. He's got a hole in him and he's congenital, he's more important. The guy was telling him he was seriously injured. Su realized that saving people was a good thing, but he didn't need any help. The life cycle has picked up a lot since the snowmobiling shutdown, the injuries are all healed now. Su said he didn't need any help. The doctor said it's like no one saw him get beaten up. Let him look at his clothes, they're all bloodstained. The doctors looked at him and asked how was that possible? What a strange person. 
shouldn't he have been injured after receiving Chow's punches? His body has a kind of endless surge of vitality. It's much better than the Qi Jin pill. What a monstrous treatment. Su said he had spoken, but they didn't believe him. Let them hurry up and save him. Hidden bitterness avoided his vital points, he would not die. The doctors immediately all looked at him strangely. Su told them to save him as soon as possible. He's telling them the truth. And then they gathered around him and shouted that he was awake. They asked Chow, is he in a lot of pain? Su said he didn't hurt him at all. And then Chow heard that and started cursing him. As Su left, he received more points for admiration. All the fans clapped and were happy that he was still alive. Su saw that on the stand, Elder Chiao had come to watch the match and even praised him, that was still okay, but what was Zhou doing here? He beat him yesterday, and today he's admiring him. There's something wrong, we have to find out. And now comes the quarterfinals of the last round. The Innate Master Number 1 in the Rankings In terms of strength, deservedly considered the elder sister of the outer court, Su decided that he would observe Mo's sister, chances were high that she would be his next rival. What's exciting about this match, Su thought. There couldn't possibly be any excitement, an opponent with a stage 10 tempering spirit lost after only two exchanges of blows. Su said, damn those innate masters. But there are two roads one leads to the Goose Lake and the other to the courtyard. Su said that the former represented mystery and the unknown, while the latter represented comfort and coziness. Su thought that he had gotten rid of the sizzling firefly seed, so why would he go to the lake? To eat another one, Su decided that he would head to the courtyard and before he reached the house he had already decided that he would take a hot tub. Lying on the couch he pulled out a pill and sniffed saying double high for him this. Su said that he had broken through to the eighth stage of spirit hardening. After perfecting the sizzling firefly seed last night, he had suppressed the realm, but now he somehow relaxed and broke through immediately. Su decided that he didn't give a damn. It was quite possible for him that his current cultivation speed was worthless to true geniuses. Su opened the system and saw the points and said that they were a bit low. Without the sizzling firefly seed, he was no longer getting passive points every second. Relying only on the spectators from the stands for the duel, he received a maximum of 4 to 5 thousand points. This is also thanks to Chow's unarmed snowfall. In the middle of the night, Su thought that it wasn't that he was worried about tomorrow's fight at all, not at all. He went outside and thought that the cicadas were chirping, the frogs were croaking, the wind had died down, and there were no people at all. Su rejoiced and said that it was a good time to practice fencing. He immediately began to work on himself. Sword wielding was different from other passive skills. It wasn't just given as reinforcement and sharpness, but rather through insight. And that insight came from Su himself. So far, he had been impressed by Chow's reception of the unarmed frost. It wasn't about the strength of spiritual ability or skill level. It was the first time he had ever seen someone detach sword intent from themselves and attach it to snowflakes. This way of using the sword intent opened up new horizons for him. Yes, he had now decided to steal from the master. Steal Chow's unarmed frost. Although the snow was not falling, but the intention of the sword was attached to the snow, could it be attached to something else? Su tried something new and said in a moment that he failed. He wondered, what was the difference from his performance? Su sighed and said that it was still good that no one saw, otherwise he would have been ashamed. Stealing from a master is not easy, Su said, however, swordsmanship of all things parasitic with sword intent has the greatest effect? In fact, this method can be used with sword intent. This cultivation method was very similar to the one he had honed before. No spiritual ability, solely with a single sword. Su thought that moving in tune with his heart meant moving in tune with his sword? Perhaps he could reach that level if he continued on that path? He doesn't have the best talent, and has only practiced one style of white cloud. However, his sword intent improved with the appearance of sword wielding. The main way to perfect the sword is to utilize the sword intent with spiritual abilities to produce an outstanding result, except that he uses the intent of the sword solely for battle. This path is destined to become a completely different path from the common path. 
you should think of a strategy for the upcoming semi-final. Sue said that the existence of the innate physique was revealed, and if the gap were to widen, and he would lose half of his abilities. The only thing that could affect the course of the battle was how to use the hidden bitterness to bypass the intent of the sword, and he was able to manifest a few tricks using the first calm cloud style. Stitched sword net style naked sword style and fickle sword style. Since the battle with Chow, he was only able to display style at a critical moment, that was more of a combination of sword and weapon intent. At that time, he felt as if the hidden bitterness had a life of its own. Su began to think, over the spiritualized weapon. It is also a way to focus the three styles of sword intent, he was able to realize it through intimacy with hidden bitterness. If he could perfectly control the hidden bitterness with sword intent, wouldn't he be able to embody the legendary sword control technique? Flying is an innate privilege. He's at the eighth stage of tempering his spirit, and with a controllable flying sword wouldn't he amaze the world with his talent? And then he decided he would give it a try. Sue let the energy into the sword and said that it was beautiful. It shows his closeness with him. Pointing his fingers at the sword told him to get up. Immediately he fell to the ground. Sue saw that it wasn't like that at all. Was the momentum of the sword throw too low? Sue immediately raised his sword and threw it up to the sky and saw that he could control it but it started to become covered in fire. Sue pointed his fingers and didn't understand what was going on. He wasn't covered in ice right now, so wouldn't he become the second Chow? Sue immediately jumped on top of him and used a sword walk. But he failed, and collapsed to the ground. Sue threw the pain got up and said it was gross and he didn't believe it. And decided he would try it again. Sue decided that he would continue. After all, he is not actually spiritualized. The moment he awakens is the moment he flies up and is summoned. That is, the inversion of the inverse sword style only in the process of inversion does it become truly spiritualized. Sue said that this damn reverse sword style should have been called the controlled sword style long ago. But what was the difference between rising and falling, he thought. Sue took the sword in his hands and presented it to his throat thinking, isn't the true principle to face himself, gaining spiritual wisdom? He is its master. Sue immediately threw it into the ground and said, What a nasty sword. Immediately, the system said there were points for cursing. At noon the next day, the outer courtyard of the Tian San Spiritual Palace marked the annual hot painting, because today, a new champion of the Chasing Clouds tournament would be born. Elder of the Spiritual Technique Pavilion, Elder of the Medicine Pavilion, Elder of the Spiritual Weapon Pavilion, and the ranking of the top 100 is 10th and 5th place. Mu was saying how great it was that she got a seat in advance yesterday. On her left hand is Chul and on her right hand is Zhou. She's so happy, people were telling them to bag him that hottie as soon as possible. He's gonna take care of that guy. The girl asked, who were they? Brother Du and Sister Lin from the top 10. Just then, one of the guys shouted out, isn't that Su from the inner courtyard? Su the strongest genius of the Su family from Tian San Prefecture, broke through to innateness as early as 13. At 14 comprehended the burned sword intent. If anyone hears one of those names they will be shocked, that's how important a person sat on the podium. The girl asked why she couldn't see Borat Shao. The guys said they were sorry they didn't see the sister from the courtyard. Heard Su likes her a lot, so she's always hanging around her. The guy confirmed that Sister Zhao is a goddess. Not only is she a beauty, but she has a gorgeous figure and is the strongest in the inner courtyard in terms of strength. But he had never seen her in person. And then the fans saw that Zhang was here. One of the 33 people in the courtyard, the epitome of a leader. A guy named Zhang asked which one of them was Su who killed Chun. Lu replied that he was still looking for him. Lu said that he didn't seem to have arrived yet. Zhang replied that calmly, he will come to the arena after all. The guys said that they had heard that boss won new people from the courtyard. So it was Zhang. The others said that they couldn't get away with something like this. The guy replied so they wouldn't think. If Su won the tournament with his cultivation level, he would easily get into the inner courtyard. On the judge's chair, Xiao Xiland sipped his drink. Immediately, 
he jumped into the sky in front of everyone to announce something. Xiao stood in the middle of the arena and said that the hour had come and now they could start the semi-finals. He held up the medallion and said Su and Mu. The semi-finals are the battles of the innate warriors everyone has been waiting for. These two, the first one had reached innate just a year after entering the spiritual palace, and second not to mention his innate body, Chao's defeat early yesterday further proved his unwavering innate strength. The guys shouted that as expected of Sister Mu, innate confidence. The doctors immediately entered the arena to be on the lookout. The guys were asking what those two idiots wanted here. Where's Su? Where did he go? He always disappears at the critical moment, he's going to make us worry about him in the semi-finals. The guys pretended it wasn't their fault and asked why they were asking them that. Xiao immediately got angry and asked, where the hell did this guy go? Immediately, Su flew into the arena on his pecha. No one expected such a turn of events, how could Su do such a thing? The girls were screaming that he was incredible. They were screaming for him to look at them, how beautiful they were. The others criticized and said, what a show off. How does he manage to wield a sword at the eighth stage of spirit hardening? Doesn't the ability to fly come after the concept of innateness? Did he have an epiphany in just one night? The guy said it's like that's possible. Let him look at his aura, he's at stage eight. But is he flying immediately? Mu said that he was flying on the wrong side of the sword. Su imagined that it was flying fast like lightning. But it's forbidden to wield a broken sword. After a night of deliberation, this trash black sword does indeed possess spiritual perception, but only when turned with the point towards it. Because of despair I had to stand on then the opposite, to hide the bitterness could, fly with him. The flight from the yard to the peak of the emerging clouds took an hour. Su realized that after an hour-long flight, he realized that this world had peculiar laws. Damn sword. Su said that he was able to collect just over 4,000 passivity points the entire way. Of course, they were contributed before that. Now here was the information panel. Xiao saw that this kid had clearly just comprehended sword spiritualization yesterday and had already learned how to wield it overnight. Such qualities were only seen in Su. Yes, and this kind of application was simply amazing. Xiao shouted to Su to come down to the arena. Su said he was coming now. The guys said they thought he was cool because of his mecha flight, and it turned out to be a control technique. He didn't intentionally stand on him backwards, did he? He's laughing his ass off. They were yelling at him to try harder. Su looked at the system and saw that there were still people cheering him on. He immediately put away the sword in his hands and descended slowly. Mu saw it and said it was the order of the chasing clouds. How will he enter without a badge? Su said that he was cautious. We'll wield the sword more confidently next time. Su immediately went over to her and said that he apologized for the delay. It won't happen again. Mu laughed and said he was so funny. And then the system showed that praise points had been added. Su thought, what else is praise? To him, it sounds like bullying. Xiao said for the contestants to get ready, and let them start the duel. Mu told Su to be careful. She's going to attack, after all. And immediately crossed her arms and let her energy flow. Su found himself in a fog and asked, What is this? Are they really seeds? How is she going to fight with them? Su immediately realized that this was an innate tree attribute. These were the seeds of an ancient tree, Mu said it was right. And with a motion of her finger, she told the tree to spread out. Immediately, Su jumped out with him. Su saw that the others had engaged in fierce battles, and this girl was using seeds. An ancient tree of the acquired level has such terrifying strength. Su decided that he would summon the black sword to take him away from here. Immediately, the tree grabbed him and squeezed him. Su realized that close combat was a mistake. As soon as he approached, he was hit by a combination of attacks. He was completely trapped by the tree, and Mu was in no hurry to finish the battle, and decided to go underneath it. The guys were saying, what a cruel girl. This smiling angel shows no mercy during the battle. Mu looked at them and laughed out loud and she saw that there was a nice fat tree right next to her. Su was completely immersed in her and the guys asked what she was doing. Mu said it was about time. 
and said the word explosion. After that, the tree exploded and the fire covered the entire arena. All that was left of their place was a hole that was buried in the ground. The elder and the others could not understand what had happened. Then the roots of a tree began to emerge from the ground. The guys said that a human wouldn't be able to survive something like this. So where does that power come from? Mu realized that thanks to the secretly parasitic seeds in Su's body, she could sense his life force. He's not dead yet, Mu asked, is he as tough as a cockroach? And how did he do with this technique? Su came out of the smoke and said, what a strong innate. Su realized that before it was the Chao Ice Sword and now the Mu Ancient Tree. The power of innate attributes is too strong. If he too had similar strength, would he limit himself to a single melee, he thought. The guys asked, is Su stupid? Is he purposely not attacking and waiting for the tree to grow? Mu immediately saw that Su wasn't attacking and decided to use the tree barrier. And yelled for him to receive it. The roots of the tree immediately attacked Su. The guys closed their eyes and said that upon rough inspection, the ancient tree had about a hundred offshoots. And they are constantly increasing. From a blast like that, even with his innate body, Su would have broken all of his arms and legs at the very least. His head wouldn't have exploded, either. They wondered what it was. Had Su gotten his own, but? Su immediately decided to become a laborer and mow wood. Su used his skills and told her to take care of herself. Immediately, her tree roots went back in with telekinesis. Mu asked, where did this boundless sword intent come from? Is it Su's sword? The seeds on the ground? Is it still herself? He is the sword of Su. Xiao watched and thought Su's reverse sword control technique was admirable, but he had no idea that this was just the beginning. But how was he trained in the sword of all things? Did anyone even surpass him in swordsmanship in the Tiansan spiritual palace? Su saw all the tree roots flying at him, and pulling out his sword, he let his energy fly at her. The guys were saying that this was the end. He thought Su was going to use a special strike, so why didn't anything happen? Mu saw that something was wrong and said that she was the only one who didn't feel any difficulty and would take over the situation. Mu touched her hands and said that she was attacking. Immediately, she released her roots right at Su. At this moment, everyone closed their eyes and Su stood still, waiting for the right moment to cut them. The boys were asking what did he do? Had he sheathed his sword? He didn't even notice Su had done it. Su stopped them with his strength, and immediately Mu flew into the sky, the guys asked, what was that just now? Su saw that brother Su took out his sword in an instant and immediately chopped many leaves. But how could he do that? Su didn't spare them and chopped all the ends off. The guys said that once Su had drawn his sword, hundreds of ancient trees were chopped down on the site, and now Su is progressing too fast. And his naked sword style doesn't look so graceful. Su said that there was no reason for Mu to be creative, but used the ancient roar vines to dodge the attack. Mu thought that if she hadn't planted the parody seeds to it, wouldn't she be chopped to pieces right now? Mu said that damn Zayas, he even committed such a cruel blow. Okay, she's using Trump too. She immediately dropped one pill, and a plant began to grow from the sky. The boys said that this girl had reliable courage. Could she not take lessons from the wound inflicted in her bosom? And now another one dares to get close to him. That's a surefire way to commit suicide. Su realized that close combat was a great thing. Immediately, they jumped towards each other to clash. At the last moment, Mu tricked him, and with her trees immobilized his one arm to launch an attack. Su saw and realized that she was completely like a snake slithering stealthily towards him from the back. Su was telling her to let him in. But she didn't feel sorry for him and went in with the plant in his body. Su started calling her names and told her not to think she could get away with it. She slowly entered his body and Su yelled for her to get off him. What kind of battle method is this? Disgusting. Mu said, how dare he call her a parasite. She's going to make a flower out of him now. Immediately, a flower came out on Sue's head just like she said it would. The guys started laughing at him and saying that he had a flower on his head. Sue realized that even his perception hadn't noticed the parasitization of her seeds in his body. 
It was somehow too unnoticeable. A blossoming flower is still okay, but after they took root in his head, it started releasing numbing factors that made him unable to move. He underestimated her and even used the naked sword style he learned last night, but that didn't work either. Sue said it was the little guy scaring him. Mu walked up to him and sniffed saying, what an amazing fragrance. Mu felt that his infinitely absurd life force was so seductive. She had finally reached her goal. Who could resist here? Mu pulled out her teeth and said that she wanted to try just a little bit. Su yelled and told her not to even think about it. She disobeyed him and immediately sank her teeth right into his neck and slowly sucked his blood. 